Uh, it is 6 30. Um, Evan is absent tonight. We do have a quorum, so we're going to have to put a regular meeting. Um, the first item on the agenda would be to consider additions, adjustments, and approving the agenda. Uh, one is to uh, review the draft warrant PD from the wall north to Lieutenant Johnson. And two is um, the use of Holmes Meadow for um, rail trail ideas or ideas for the use of Holmes Meadow. Camping. And I wouldn't say if you need to be specific. Any other um, additions to the agenda? All right, we're going to try something different tonight, um, which is going to be essentially a consent or a bunching of, a, of several agenda items into one motion to approve. Hopefully, that will streamline and make our meetings go faster. I love it. And, if we do that, it's my belief that the agenda items themselves need to be more specific. So I'm going to make a recommendation that we modify the agenda to in the following way. Um, that item number eight, which is review and approve buyout applications, reflect that our application is from Jennifer Bresselier and Bryn Milfong. Um, I don't know. You are uh, not yet. Okay. You, you have to complete your paperwork to get on. Okay. Uh, sorry. So, item 10 appointments sorry. and resignations. Uh, you, can you have this as a different yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, appointments and resignations. The Brad Alvin Committee has recommended appointing Adrian Stimson and Aubrey Wagner. The Conservation Commission is recommending the appointment of John Keith, John Keith, um, and the Historical Society has received the reg resignation of Dennis Richards. And item 12, the Conservation Committee grant request, um, I would add to that um, grant from the is it the Association of Conservation. Okay, from our conservation districts in the amount of $600 with $200 coming from the Conservation Commission Reserve Fund. And those I would make a recommendation to make extra changes to the agenda. So I don't actually put it to that effect. But I will move that. Dr. recommendation. Yeah. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor, because I'm saying aye. 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 Yeah. All right, so those changes uh, have been made. Any other any other items that anybody can think of would be great to uh, everyone consider additions, adjustments, et cetera. Okay, um, I'm going to, uh, I know we have a group of people here from the uh, seniors. Uh, they are not specifically on the agenda to, so that the board can't, take any specific actions, but they are here, and I think they would like uh, a couple minutes to speak under public comment. So I don't know if you've designated somebody to speak on your behalf or how do you want to do that? But. Yeah, well, Charlie's on his way. So he should be here any minute, but um, in case everybody doesn't know me, I'm Cheryl Fuller, and I'm part of the senior group. The senior group that had that room right over there. And then when the flood came without any notice or anything, we were displaced from there. And I wonder if you people stopped to realize when you did that, that you might not be aware of even or even considered the needed immensity of the impact that it has had on our local citizens, senior citizens. Prior to the flood, there were 50 to 20 seniors meeting in the room in the municipal building, 
and they look forward to their time together to socialize with good friends, to support and encourage each other. And I have to stop and look at you people and think, I'm sorry, Duncan, but I'm not sure your age and it really doesn't matter. No. Okay. <laughs> so, but but the rest of you, I wonder if you even stop and think about when you get older, how you need communication with people and how interacting with people, how important that is. I just, I don't know, we were flabbergasted. And of course, the other thing is that nobody had the courtesy to even tell us. So, and it goes back to tonight when I asked to be a week ago today to put on, be put on the agenda. I sent a message. Did I even get a response? No, I did not. I'll take full responsibility for that. I'm sorry. Um, there was a moment where um, the chair, the vice chair, and I were going back and forth on what last minute changes to agendas. We made a new rule. Uh, you'll see it tonight, front porch forum. It was posted that all agenda items need to be to the board one week before the meeting. Um, and that allows the board to prepare for the week and the administrator prepare for the week for tonight's meeting. And so when that email came in, we had already set the agenda, but there was a lot of stuff in the air and uh, it was decided not to be added to the agenda. And I should have replied to you and I'm sorry, the ball got dropped, but that's the reason it did not get on to me. And, and then again, okay, then why were we even notified when we were kicked out of the room over there and we weren't allowed to come in? The doors were all locked on us. Why didn't anybody have the courtesy to let us know? I'm going to take responsibility for that one, I guess. I think that at the time, it was all hands on deck with the flood response stuff and we probably missed that. My apologies, but I think we all had our hands down for at the moment. But you're right. We probably should have yes, provided some notice. Do you have any idea how that makes us feel? It makes us feel that very disrespected. It's like we're worth dirt under your feet, people. I mean, it does. You go ask your grandmother how she would like to be treated like this. Or you ask your grandma. Sure, I'm sorry that I came across that way. Um, there's been, I started in September and there's been several communications where I've tried to organize times to get in to get materials. And I've tried to organize with local buildings in the area. Um, it was last understood that you guys had a location that was temporary. Um, and although it's not the location that you were granted, you know, that back room, but it was a temporary location, just like this is our temporary location. And I hope you saw tonight how hard it is just to hold a meeting. You know, we're dragging wires across the room. I unplugged Rosemary's computer. She couldn't get on if she wanted to just so we could hold the meeting. You know, it's we're all struggling here. We got about maybe two more months and then we're going to be back to normal. But please, we got two more months. We got to work. Have you ordered the furniture? We're working on it. We're working on it. I was told that you'd ordered it. Didn't you say in your last meeting that you had ordered it? We are um, waiting to order the furniture. We have to come. We have to first come up with the first. We have to calculate the total loss of the downstairs contents for every item that's lost, whether it's a ten dollar file organizer or whether it's a two thousand dollar desk. We have to calculate that number has to be greater than the cost of the new furniture. We know what the new furniture is going to cost. It's quite expensive. It's about $44,000. And so now we need to make our loss of the items downstairs greater than that $44,000 or else it's going to cost all of our taxpayers thousands of dollars. So I'm sorry it's taking a little longer, but we're trying our hardest so that it costs, costs all of us nothing. Now we can move forward. Okay, so the next question was, how, how many of you have ever read the deed that got this place here in the first place. Thank you. I'm glad you have it, Lewis. Because in the deed, Marion Prescott sold this land to the town with 
the, the whatever you want to call it, I'm sorry, I was getting stipulation that we have the seniors, that the town have a place for the seniors. And you need to keep that in mind. You are not fulfilling your, your share of this, what she requested. And it was legally signed and, and processed yes. and everything. Yes. It's a legal binding document. Yes. Ask Mr. Moldy. He's the <laughs> one that signed it. it. Yes. Um, so I don't know. You can see I'm the only one that's talking, but I can tell you I've heard from everybody here that they are just as upset about this displacement as we are, as I am. Are you ready for the furniture? Can you set us up downstairs? We can't actually take any action tonight, Charlie, because it is not a voice agenda item. <clears throat> I can only speak for myself and say that, like, I really do understand what you're saying about the need for connection and, and about losing that and how you know this was all kind of thrown on you I, I i am sorry that it was not communicated to you that was an oversight and ultimately it's on the select board that that oversight happened so i i apologize um there's a lot of this that is out of any of our hands and first and foremost among this is is the flood that we experienced that is what closed this building all of the work that we have had to do to get this place back open has been slowed down at every step of the way because we're trying to abide by the FEMA process, which is very, very stringent, very, very exacting. I wish that we could do everything faster. Um, I wish that it were possible for us to find another space, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, move our offices temporarily. The decisions that were made were the ones that were made and you know that we are we're, we are here because of because of those decisions i wish that things could move faster i wish that we could get you in this space faster and as soon as it's available that, that is what i hope we will do um okay let me stop right there then what why can't somebody use this space right where you people are now because you only use it once a month isn't that right uh, this is actually are working this table sits here and it's probably you know up until 4 15 this afternoon it was used that's where all like the processing for for bills and paperwork and as it comes off the printer there's it's like a dystopian movie up here during the day it's, it's actually the most dysfunctional work environment i've ever been in it, it's very hard and you know it's we're trying you know we're doing our best and i think you know i think really nobody's Nobody disagrees that how frustrating the situation is for everybody. You know, I'm sorry how much you've been impacted. Um, but the reality is we, we need this space too. And I'm sorry. Can we have it for about two more months? Mark, could we hear something from you? Um, I, my concern is, you know, the past is the past. I, I can apologize, but I'm trying to think, what can we do proactively it will, it, I, I need to hear from you more clear. I mean, you want this space right now. I don't think that's an option. But where, what can we do? Like our dedicated space. Yes. Yes. Why yes. can't that be moved out? Well, it's Rosemary's building. And it's the Slackboard's building, too. But I mean, I don't think we're ready to move downstairs. Do you, do you want us to, do you, do you want us to move out of there and go right downstairs? I'm gonna I'm gonna call a halt to this because we're getting into the territory of making decisions about the use of the property for an item that's not a warrant agenda item. And no matter what we say right now, it's not a warrant agenda item, right, wrong, or otherwise. There's open meeting law. The legislature uh, told us that we have to be responsive to public input, et cetera. So I think we can have that discussion. My understanding it's going to be on our first June meeting. Um, so please notify Cheryl of the time, date, and place of that meeting, and we can have those discussions at that time. I think tonight 
I tried to offer an opportunity for a little bit of public input, a little bit of public comment, but I think we're drifting dangerously into areas that we shouldn't be in. Right now. So I'm going to call. I'm going to call that uh, public comment uh, portion uh, over and uh, move on to. Uh, I'm not going to hear other other public comments. What's that? No other public comment comments. Is there other public comment yes. related to what? Related to enforcement of uh, town ordinances, specifically form based code. You got three projects going on in town. I don't believe any permits have been issued. Uh, <clears throat> like, I know one that you had mentioned was the post office. Right. I don't. Did you have an opportunity to talk to Charlie about that one? Yeah, I did. And we do have Tom is the enforcement officer. Okay, it's not posted. What are the uh, other? The other one. Well, the nicest we can do with us. The other one is the Willen Mall, and then the corner of um, School Street and Clay Hall. There's a permit for that one. There is a permit. Yep. But I'll check in. I'll follow up the Willen Mall tomorrow. Thanks. And. You know, as I pointed out, the work at Sterling Market or whatever the building is called is not compliant with the farm based code. I, so I do you want that next month? I, I would defer to Tom as the enforcement officer to answer that question. I think it's more appropriate that so he does so than the board. I, I do want to validate Charlie's thought that. There is plywood covering windows that does meet does not meet the sixty percent. Not talking about the plywood. Okay. The plywood's covering what was the storefront. Yeah, I guess maybe I I wasn't under maybe but I don't the, understand your full concern. The window at the that was on the the far side going into the post office. The, the window was on the left has been covered up and it looks pretty permanent to me. Um, and so my interpretation of that is that this was temporary work. There are active plans from the building owner to put in a, a permit and to, but they're waiting on engineering and approval from FEMA and, you know, no different than the town offices and the town library. And so to make them put in a permit for temporary work seems like it was a nice. It's a code requirement. You know, it's... Well, I think there's a different, there's no, um, there's no description for temporary work and there's no requirement for a permit for temporary work in form based code. Yes, there is. Any work of structural or you want me to read them to you? Well, I, I think I don't know if we have to do it tonight. Okay. I, I think Can I like just that that yeah. really is ultimately yeah. a question for the enforcement officer to deal with. You're, I think you're raising a legitimate concern, Charlie. I just think you should raise it. So, yeah, the yeah. next point is I have raised it with him. He's put me on. So I'd like to know uh, who ultimately he has. You can delegate authority to him, but the responsibility lies with the select board for enforcing the farm based code. Charlie, I'm sorry I felt like I put you off. I actually asked for your input in changes to form based code. Um, well, we we're, changes to form based code we've addressed, and that's a process. No, it's, I mean, I'm, I was under the understanding we're still in the middle of a conversation. Um, I didn't realize that, it, that I put you off. Um, Charlie, could you read the specific piece of form based code that you think we're not in uh, compliance with? Sure. You're somewhere. Oh. Uh, Actually, it's in several places, but in terms of uh, repair work, alterations, replacements, refurbishments, repair, and maintenance on a non conforming structure, which that was, still requires uh, um, a permit. Well, uh, let's see what permits are required. I guess permit that's application. application. Is this specific for temporary? Like, you know, there's nothing that, in, the, in the form based code that distinguishes between permanent and temporary. And I think that was actually the conversation you and I had is like, at what point does temporary work become permanent? And 
So my my judgment was based on the fact that we know long term changes are coming to that building, or the building may may or may not be raised. You know, but torn down. Um, yeah. yeah, but you know, so it's, be raised. <laughs> could be. That's fun. Z versus S, isn't it? Um, so I think I I think that that's an excellent debate, and I think that's that was my intent of asking you the the changes because defining gray areas and making things black and white cleans it up for everybody moving forward so that it's no longer a debate but an actual just a de did they follow the rules or not and i think this is an excellent example of that and i do i do think your point is valid but since they're going to spend the work and permanent spend the time to plan permanent work at this point i don't think a permit is necessary until they stop that process of designing permanent permits that's that's just how i feel that it would be too bureaucratic to have Two, a two permit process for temporary work, temporary repairs, and then permanent repairs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna again say that you should make a decision. If you don't like the decision, you can appeal that decision. I'm not, I, I'm not sure that that comes back to this board. I think it goes to the DRB. That's correct. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> your point is taken. Um, can we try and work with Tom? Tom can either issue it, you know, he can issue give it his opinion, and then we can get it from that. Work? Final point, yes. Another issue. Um, the dirt had, that was brought into the skate park. There was a permit issued by the, <clears throat> uh, there was a stormwater permit issued by the town. Attached to that was a letter from the so can you speak up just a little? I'm not sure. There's a letter from Rebecca Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. It's attached to the permit, which requires that prohibits bringing in more dirt. And yet, truckloads have been brought in. There's a provision that allows that okay, you bring in dirt, you can't capture it. No dirt has ever been removed. Who's going to enforce? It's it's the town issued the permit. Who's going to enforce? The requirements of that permit. Town doesn't issue stormwater permits. Is this a floodplain? Yeah, floodplain permit. Okay. Oh, oh sorry, floodplain permit. I'll um, okay. I'll meet with Jason tomorrow. We have a We never had a sign together, but let's meet back then. I remember what you're talking about. For yeah. for every load that's brought in, one's supposed to be. Removed. And they've never done it. They barely even acknowledge that the problem exists. But it exists. Do you know when that dirt was brought in? Jason, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, it was before the flood. Yeah, it was. For, it was for a project that was supposed to take place, but funding and grant things held it up. The one that the project has happened in this year, I think. So it, oh, it's how it happened, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. So it, it's gonna get filled, and they're taking out the whatever they didn't, you know, close the little. Car got ahead of the horse a little bit. Well, yeah. All yeah. right. Can you guys deal with that? Um, it's a legitimate question concern. Um, we're going to try, try and keep our meeting somewhat on, on chat here. Um, do we have orders to review and are they circulating on the right side? Okay. Um, so we're going to review and uh, approve invoices and orders. Um, select for issues and concerns. Um, anybody got a? Select board issue for our next meeting. At our next meeting, we're going to have a planning. That's a subject that's going to come up. We had originally planned to try and meet up here. Yeah. Um, but I think we're going to have to find a different location or a plus one meeting. Because. Yeah, that's that's right. I just want to get the the ball rolling. So now, I would speak more with you offline about this. If you feel like you have my phone number, can we get this offline, please? So we can get the Yeah. Uh, Shane, I would really like to. Here, if you have any news for us on Green um, Day and um, the kennel issue that was being discussed with my park, so you can. Okay, I don't have any updates on the kennel. 
Anybody else have any other sort of quick concerns issues? I have one. Um, I received an email from Giselle Eldred regarding um, a long standing and ongoing issue that they've had with a neighbor in the property, the Armstrong property. Um, I'm happy to share the email with anybody that wants to see it, but uh, in the interim, I've asked uh, um, Dean Locke and uh, BJ Putman to undertake an investigation to find out what's going on, what's happening, what has or hasn't been done, um, and report, you know, report that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a mess that's been going on for, you know, and I was still working on it. So it's been a long time, it's long overdue there, you know, they've been extremely patient, um, and, and you, know, you need to address it. Gotta, gotta be addressed. So again, I'm happy to share the email that I got with anybody if they want and any correspondence that I get. Dean Locke um, emailed me this afternoon and basically said uh, he was trying to review his file and see what had happened um, and thought it was appropriate to do another site visit. Candidly, I responded back and said, yes, please do another site visit, but we got to resolve this thing. There's got to be, be some action taken. I thought it was resolved. No, it's not. And it's still Unbound. basically a mess. Um, all right. Yeah, that was. Um, are there any other circuit issues or concerns? Shane, you want to give us a brief update on? Yeah, green update? Um, green update went off. I mean, without a hitch, we had uh, some folks from the fire department came out and helped out. We had a big group from Laraway, uh, some folks from the elementary school. Um, and yeah, so all told, I think we gave out 380 bags somewhere around there. Um, not sure how many got filled and put in the back of the truck, but Maybe Jason had a number we yeah. Yeah, I can answer that for sure. I'm around that. So Rick, we uh, took 209 bags of trash and uh, 135 tires, two TVs, two AC units, and a, a 100 pound LP tank. So I heard some I heard a rumor about an ATV off of um hogback on in the riverbank. Um, submerged in mud. Really? It's been uh, removed. It has been removed. Yeah, okay. I went, right. I went to get the coordinates for you. Okay. And um, it has, has been removed. Oh, good. Okay. Um, we was, figured it, was it in there because of the flood? That's yeah, the it point. was in yeah. there. It, 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 got, it got deposited in July when we did the cleanup in the fall. Um, we went and found it and, you know, made a lame attempt to try to move it. And it was not possible for my husband and I to do it. And um, we've just kind of been watching the progress. And then with the most recent flood, you know, the channel there has completely reconfigured um, where the suspension bridge is and where there used to be the secondary channel that needed a bridge and didn't have one. Now it no longer needs one. So um, it's kind of cool. But the reason why it no longer needs one is also um, involved with the ATV and getting it buried. All that, all that river material buried it. And, but somebody, somebody, Got the booty. Yeah. So all that to say, I think that takes the cake for best piece of trash found. If you're maybe not trash, maybe someone able to create another life out of it. But so that's for you up there. May I ask one question? Yeah. I, I noticed coming in on Route 15 that there's still a whole lot of green bags out along Route 15. Um, I, um, toward Waterville. The state picks up. Um, yeah. And on um, Hogback Road, I left four full bags there along with a vacuum cleaner, which was my prize of the day. I didn't get the ATV, but I got the vacuum cleaner. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so state roads state are done road, by state. Yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, on Hogback, I'm assuming you will get out to different. Is, is Hogback Road was picked up, it's okay. the thing, but Route 15 perhaps, wasn't. Right. Yeah, Route 15 is not our jurisdiction. Route 15, 100, it's all state road. They'll, they'll be out this week. Yeah. They, they usually do it throughout the week. I saw a V-Trans truck with a bunch of green bags in the back of it. Some of them, they probably can't stop to get them, so they got to you know, figure something out, but they'll get them. Thanks for doing that, Jim. Yes, thank you, Shannon. All right, um, item four, um, 
is listed as consent items. Since I was not planning on chairing the meeting tonight, I was going to make a motion since it's the first time we're going to try this. Um, and I'm going to make a motion that we approve uh, that we bunch a number of agenda items together, including item one, which would be consideration of approving and adjusting the, uh, I'm sorry, it should be uh, the minutes. So it should be item A under four, uh, A, B, and A, B, C, and D. Um, item number eight, the buyout application, which now reads review and approve buyout applications, Gianna for rest of the year, and Fred Wilfong. Number 10, the appointments, which includes Redham and Committee, Adrian Stepson, Aubrey Wagner, Conservation, Joan Keith. Historic Society resignation, Dennis Richards, and item 12, um, approving the grant, retroactively approving the grant request for $600 with $200 coming from the CC. So your motion is to approve all of those? All of those in mass. I will vote. And I will vote for it. All right, we've got a, a motion and a second. All those in, in comment, discussion. So, just so that we are doing our due diligence. Rosemary, do you have any, any comment on the liquor license or the tobacco license? Yeah. Um, it would probably be good. Okay. I'm assuming they're in the case. Yeah. Oh, we're not doing liquor license. We are. Um, I thought that was in the Yes. A, B, and C, and we don't have any plan purchases, right, Don? None. Okay. okay. So. Yeah, so Ryan would be approve the minutes, approve the liquor and tobacco license, the buyout applications, which is actually item eight. Item e. Well, it's also eight. Yeah. Um, and ten and twelve. But the license from Butternut Mountain Farm. Do they have one presently? Yes. Yeah. Carl Valley. And Moogs has one for first class, third class, and a outside consumption. Which is also a very good. Yes. They've always had it. Yes. Yeah. Donna, did you get those? Yeah, that is um uh Burnham on Farm, RL Valley. You said you said first, third, and outside consumption are the others. Those are all yeah, one they're class two, but okay. And RL Valley's is maple fields. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a one time occasion from Vermont Studio Center for a Showing on Saturday afternoon. In our opening, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's from two to six. What day is it? On Saturday, May 11th. Okay. You have a tobacco? Uh, maple field test. Oh, that was so. Uh, we also have tobacco. I mean, that's pretty pro forma these days, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you want to do cannabis separate or together? We're, we authorized Tom to. I just appreciate yeah. cannabis. Like okay. This. So, so with those additions, um, thank you. Are, are you are you willing to do a friendly amendment to include the? Uh, oh yeah, if, if we need to include the um, all of the specific. Yeah, the actual location. The yeah. actual, okay. yeah, location yeah. of our song. Okay. That's right. You like to see that on the agenda that goes public, the name for the buyout. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. That's what I made for my note, but just make sure and all the licenses. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, that way we could just, rather than add them, we can just say, yeah, no, I mean, that, eight, nine, ten, whatever. If you ever redact the 
um, authority to cannabis that can't be public. That's the only one that can't be. Yeah, yeah. as long I as that's out, out. I'm suggesting that we retract that authority. Yeah, sometimes you want to do it. All right, we have a we have a motion. We have a second. We is there any further discussion? All those in favor of adopting items at mass signify by saying aye. 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 Hold on. That consent. I um, mean, that should take care of a few of those items. Um, I think that moves us to the clerk treasurer report. Uh, did you have other items for us, Rosemary? I'll pass out the uh, So you can be late. Uh, we'll count the rule and I'll design. If I if I can get the part, can you say count count pool or pool? Um, we've got plenty of those. Since it moves, we should have it. I don't think I'm going to say. It was great. I think we'd like to bring it to our attention. As are we on on track for? We're at the sixty-nine percent budget spent. And on Friday I got notice that the state tax department has approved all our flood abatements in the amount of eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. That's for the statewide education yes. property tax. Yes. Okay. So that when I do the final adjustment for the school tax, that will come into play and that will fix the uh, tax related items on the first page. That's good news. Yes. Is that permanently or is that like after the abatement? Is the abatement like a one time? One time. Got it. And a lot of these places that we gone. Yeah. Right. And which will require that. Like, uh, just went to the very last time, right? Sure. And um, AOT did a great monitoring last week, and they did a substance grant monitoring desk review. It's conducted by the contract administrator grant unit on April 26th. The purpose of the monitoring review was to determine if the town of Johnson complied with all relative laws, regulations, and procedures under the grant agreement. Um, is that relative to the Genesis promise? Nope, this is AOT grant law. Oh, okay, okay, sure. And they wish to acknowledge that the grant requirements were met and that this gave us a new um, federal and state marketing list that we should check for, we get for any contractors before we do any great stuff. Good job, Jason and Tom. You too, Shane. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Jason. That's all that I have. Thank you, Joe, for Rosemary. Is 69% um, a good number? Is that where we typically are this time of year? Yeah. So There'll be a few things that you say before the end of the year. Get us closer to that. Oh, yeah, we still got two more months. Yeah. yeah. Okay, if there's no other questions for um, Rosemary, um, we have a, a 650 Community Economic Development Specialist report. We are not going to have a report from Randall. However, he is asking that we do an update to the uh, Northern Borders Regional Commission's signature authority that is needed for um, the quarterly reporting, or I guess it's quarterly reporting, and the end of grant requirements. So, as of now, the signatory authority is that fully. No, obviously, is no longer available. Um, the, Documents that um, that Randall put together had listed me as the signatory. I don't care. Um, 
I'm in town probably more often than Evan, um, so it might be just easier to sign off with us. So it's it's totally up to the board. Um, do you need a motion? Because I will make a motion that we um, touch and paste the speed that I'm sorry for what you that NBRC. Yes. Is there there's a board resolution? Do you have a copy of the resolution? In the packet. Okay. So the resolution reads, um, Colonel Johnson, the resolution authorizing the facing to his vice chair of the select board is empowered to act on behalf of the town of Johnson as the uh, authorized official resolved by the town of Johnson select board as follows, where it is town of Johnson has been awarded an NBRC grant in the amount of eight hundred sixty-one thousand nine hundred and forty-five dollars and forty-two cents. Uh, now, for now, therefore, be it resolved that Duncan Hanks and Place Chair is hereby authorized on behalf of the town to sign. You read that right. documents. I move that we adopt this language as written. And I second that. We have a motion and then a second. Any further discussion on the resolution or necessary authorities? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? That is it. The resolution passes. Randall doing work. Randall keeping busy and doing good stuff. Randall is doing fantastic work. Well, we're on the, this subject of his report. I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, Randall and I worked um, pretty extensively on the Swift Current grant application for the grocery store, um, which involves the potential of dry flood proofing. Which sort of gets to Charlie's point. Um, it's not here, um, and and we certainly haven't asked the planning commission to try and make modifications to the on that scope to allow those kinds of um, approvals. If we are approved for that grant, it would be a pass through grant. It would cover one hundred percent of the cost of construction for Palmer to make those improvements. We also applied for uh, $63,000 in change for um, ed townwide administration. And I think roughly 10,000 of that was for um, legal fees. Um, and I will tell you that we don't have to take any action on this tonight, but I will tell you that if we get approved, um, we need, here I use a flood related metaphor, a watertight document um, with Pomelo clarifying exactly who does what um, under this data in terms of admin and financial responsibility, et cetera. So we, if we get the grant, we will be coming back to the board with a request to um, have our attorney work on a Memorandum of understanding or grant agreement, uh, which really clarifies all those items. Yeah. 100%, you say? It will cover 100% of the construction. And, you know, that's another thing I was really clear in, in having discussions with the farm law folks around is there is no money in the grant for their administrative services and functions. Um, so it covers 100% of the construction costs, but it does not cover any of their costs associated with giving us the information we need to file the paperwork with FEMA. Uh, so that's on their echo, and they they indicated several times that that's fine. We understand that. Um, you know, they have the necessary staff, et cetera, to accommodate that, and they're more than happy to you know, provide that. Did I did I read correctly that it does cover our administrative costs? We we submitted an application for sixty three thousand dollars and change um, to cover our costs. That has to be approved. If it does not get approved, at any point in time, the town can back out of its willingness to participate or submit this, this grant. So if it doesn't get approved, that would certainly be an opportunity for us to say. We're not going to do this. This has the potential to be a multi million dollar grant. I believe it's uh, about $1.4 million right now just for the construction. And 
this construction would be conditional on it meeting our floodplain regulations, correct? It would be, yes, yes. State and town. State and town. Yeah, it's, so it, it would be contingent on the, one of the things that's been mentioned several times by Vermont Emergency Management staff and Rebecca Pfeiffer is the dry flood proofing proposal that Farmer Love's engineer has prepared must meet the minimum requirements of the National Flood Insurance Program standards for dry flood proofing. If it does not, it's dead in the water. Well, I, I, you know, I'm no, not, I'm not even just thinking about, you know, what's going to work for that property. I'm thinking about all of the other properties around it, and that that's the other purpose of our, our floodplain regulations is to protect other properties that could be affected by somebody doing that type of work. And you know, the, the proposal I've heard is putting a big wall around the property. If that proposal has changed, then I'm glad to hear it. But doing that would almost certainly push the water elsewhere. And you know, I, there are there are other people around who don't want to have their homes built because you know the market is open again. So um yeah. The proposal as it's currently written would involve um integrating a wall into the existing wall and up to a height of the 500 year floodplain elevation, um, which if that meets the minimum requirements of famous NFIP standards would also meet the minimum requirements of the child's blood as you can it for the uh, what I the best one. What I am worried about is, you know, the, the impact on surrounding people, the impact up and downstream. And you know, I, if that's not something that is addressed by our flood and regulations, I believe it was, but um, you know, that's where that proposal has sounded questionable to me. Is you know, I, I haven't heard a whole lot about mitigating the impacts. Of it. So are you saying that you're concerned that if the store doesn't flood, that water will affect other people? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if they are... It's a part of the bucket. Well, all the water in that... Store, it would be 30,000 square feet of buildings, which is passing through there, what, in 20 seconds? Well, I mean, yeah. you're uh, technically I mean, you're right. Like, they're engineers. They and, know this. Stuff. Well, right. That's but what I'm. I'm that's what I'm getting at. Is like the engineering work is a part of this, right? And and that like it's not going to go forward if the engineering turns out that we are creating, you know, a a, a problem, right? But I had the same concern when we were talking about shielding the road, right? Where if, if we are ensuring that something that we're doing to protect one particular part isn't having upstream or downstream impacts, then we, we're creating a problem for someone else. And I don't, I'm not comfortable with us as a town doing that. And so that's, I'm just asking the question to make sure that we're, we're not. <laughs> I, I don't think that I could answer the question. If, if, there, if the proposal was successful, it would dry flood proof that building to an elevation of the 500 year floodplain which would divert floodwaters from going through that building. So I think the answer to your question is it would have that effect. Right. Well, I think we have to trust the state and federal permitting process to address that, right? If there's a reason that those requirements are already in place, and that the store is likely not going to get a pass just because it's a store, they're still going to have to follow all state and federal laws that are currently have. Right? Yeah. And I, you know, I suppose the counterpoint to that is any other property owner could choose to do the same thing. Right. They might not have the same access to resources. I guess what I'm hoping is that we figure out the answer to those questions before we like town resources into you know to try to but that well I can yeah. tell you the grant application has been submitted to be based on you know, the information. So I was not here at the last meeting to give my piece about it. Yeah, I mean, so to some extent, that horse is out of the gate. Um, but I think you know the final decision is going to be if it is, if it's deemed 
an acceptable engineering option, then it would be another opportunity to have that discussion. I mean, the, the bottom line is the town basically has an opportunity to follow its application and have any contrary needs. Okay, further on that, we've got public. All right. Um, so, yes, Dan. Yeah, so I'm going to ask a question. Um, it just seems to me like a terrible idea to spend a million and a half dollars, even if it's not town money, and wasting the world's money on holding back a river at a location that has like repeatedly flooded. I just can't imagine like how we could successfully hold back the river. And even though engineers might meet this 500 year flood plain, it just seems like I would, I would, I would appeal to you guys to just use some common sense. And there's gotta be some point, And I guess I wonder what that point is where you'll just say, this property is not worth investing any more money in. And I, I understand we need a grocery store in town. I'm not saying we don't need a grocery store in town. I'm saying there's way better uses for money, way better locations, and maybe it's just time to say, hey, that is not the right place to have a building. We hear your complaint. Uh, okay, I think Jason is here next with a road farming report. Any action on this? Uh, Part of the night, and yeah, I want to uh, build the shelter when we're used to our contract that we have. I don't want to use any of the money, but I it is going to come in under budget, I believe. By what I but it will currently have, yeah, to it's going to be under the, the money that we budgeted for. But I would like to fill it up under this contract if I'm going to have it. That's okay. Okay with you, Tap. Yeah. Can you overfill it? And it seems like everything you buy now is going to be some cheaper than your skin. I don't get rid of it. We're going to take all the salt that's in there out. It's a new salt and put that salt in the So that was the salt in the forest that actually didn't turn out as bad in the winter. It's going to be as cool as it's right there. You're going to be able to use that once you take it home? Yeah. And we don't want to because I want to line it up with a compass so they can, and they're very good about giving us the time when they're coming, they roll a bunch of trucks. So we want to get it out on the ramp to edit the weather and get it out. So I want to get rain on the table and pass it. It's happening. You're doing uncomfortable with Jason using the budget for that purpose? Seems perfect. Well, I didn't have full trust in the professions. Probably seven to three thousand dollars, probably twenty-ish. That one. So, yeah. Well, I and I think that's you know, and I think it's appropriate to discuss it in, in those terms. But in the way I'm thinking about it, it's it's in your budget already. Um, so, do we need any specific specific authorization for him to do that? Um, I think in purchasing policy, May twentieth, we're going to make those changes, so we wouldn't need authorization. I think. Is to be in line with the policy, and it's over a thousand dollars. We haven't, or no, we did make the amendment three thousand, but still over three thousand. You should probably just make a motion and that way. Just found what would you like to make a motion? How much are you looking to spend? The, the budgeted amount is It's 38,000. The shed's only half empty, so without doing a bunch of math real quick, it would be probably somewhere in 25, 28,000 inch range, give or take. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion authorize Jason to spend up to $27,500 to refill the salt shed. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Any second? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. The last one I could have maybe included, I don't want to confuse you, is the dust control. Ground start. 
find that in the next week or two. And it is more than ten thousand dollars to buy per load. Um, it's a dollar a gallon, roughly it's five thousand gallons per load. And our budget is Forty thousand we spent. And yeah, I'm sorry. Forty thousand we spent. Thirty four hundred. Yeah. So you want to spend thirty four thousand on dust control? We do spend that usually every year because it's more on but that's what comes through with so their their shapes even come ready. They won't be all of that before in the life source, but He's going to be bringing loads and we apply a thousand gallons per lane mile. So that's that's the recommended. That, yeah, I mean, it's, they're recommending more. Technically, so it's a little less. Than, yeah, and we're doing a little bit less because it costs a lot. I mean, they want a thousand gallons. So we're doing so a lane mile, they're, they're recommending. Thousand gallons. We're we're doing six to seven hundred for the most part. And then high traffic areas, we're doing thousand gallons. So we're cutting back on them with flat shady areas because they don't dry out as much. But I, uh, my experience is it's money well spent. Yeah, it stays in the dirt for five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, pulls everything together during a big rainstorm and they walk start ditching. So. Uh, can I make a motion that we um, authorize Jason to spend the remainder of his dust control budget? But if you up to $34,500, I think that's the limit. You could make it Well, uh, I would make the motion that we authorize Jason to spend the remainder of his dust control budget. I'll second. In, in this system. Which has been made and seconded during further discussion. All those in favor of the amount of their presenting signify they say hi. Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, thank you. And then just a couple of pieces of information. Truck 19 had a spring PM completed and uh, did not state inspection. Uh truck 20 the same. Uh truck 21 is down there right now. That's the newest one. When the salt truck goes down for the last one as far as for the bigger trucks in the fleet. Do you anticipate any, any problems with the salt trucks? We, me and Tom have talked about it. It was told us, uh, was told me last year and Brian that it was going to need breaks for the next inspection, which we've been talking about and planning on it earlier. So I think we a bigger bill, but it's, it's going to be needed for the state inspection. So, so I think at our at our last board meeting we authorized Jason to then order me and get the truck inspected. This salt truck would be under that yep. same yes. category of the equipment budget. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's not whatever it needs to be from the inspection, what I was authorized to do. It's over there. So Jason, all in all, how was your mud season sugaring season? Ah, uh, mud season. It wasn't terrible. The problem spots were where the shakering was happening. Yeah. The sap bomb was happening. Yeah. Um, but all in all, I don't have the final numbers. I think probably the next month because I guess some of the receipts yeah. in why I was on vacation and we just got back yesterday. <laughs> so, um, but your gut feeling is just that we're on budget. We didn't yeah, we blow didn't it go, out of the water. Um, between the mud abatement and then some of the gravel, we'll be all set. Thanks. So as a as a final thought relative to your report, I think at our last board meeting, we authorized Tom and Jason to make a determination as to when the screen posting could be um, removed or lifted. Can we, are we set yeah, we to took that? it down to weeks ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. I thought I'd seen one the other day. Oh, oh. Best one. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send me a text. Like, so I'll send you a picture. The man with one eye, we trust the visions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions for Jason on his report? No, the roads are wonderful. Thanks for the Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you. The grading is looking good. Love that. I love that whole. It is worth its 
the king is waiting for the battle. And it's the Lord all set with me. Are you all set with the board? I'm all set with the board, yeah. yeah. There's no other action items that I'll be needed for. I'll, I'll just take them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, you had a good vacation. Yeah. Thanks. So I, I, in, when we talked about changes to the agenda, I inserted uh, the two items that Tom mentioned: um, review of draft for the school project in Holmes Meadow. Um, I would suggest that we take Holmes Meadow first because Doug is here to talk about Holmes Meadow. Do you want me to tee that up in any way, shape, or manner? Yeah, sure. Well, you don't I'll, I'll do this. Okay. Um, the as the folks have done really good work in Tom, especially in, in procuring Holmes Meadow. Um, I've been interested in that from the point of view of the rail trail for a long time. Um, the on the, on the John, Johnson's position on the rail trail is really the exact middle, and what we found out from Eva Rose last time in, in terms of bookings is that uh, that the people are traveling at the three stages, Cambridge, Hardwick, each each end. And so we need to get to get all of the attractive attractions uh, or, or infrastructure in place because people are going to to tend to stay in those places. So you know the, the, the rail trail is, is a tremendous should be a tremendous benefit to the community and I in my brain I've divided this thing into infrastructure uh information dispersal you know whether it's uh, web page kiosk signage um uh, about our, our our attractions here and and services you know so so I, I the uh the services you know we're really weak on food sleeping showers uh, things like that. We can do certain grants, but but the uh, one thing that we could do for infrastructure would be to provide something that other people said are not likely to have, which would be camping facilities. The other thing that I I've, I've been pushing and looking for is that would set us apart would be a hostel, you know. And uh, both Duncan and I have had conversations uh, with uh, Gene Richards or some of his, his agents about the third floor, because he's thinking about what, what might work uh, there. And hostels are very useful. So um, we're going to need to, through our information, through a better web page, something that would link up with, 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 the, with, the, with the state's um, web page, which is very difficult. It's not difficult to link up, but it's hard for people to get through the issue. We need to have, and we had a committee that was Beth Boy, Adrian Stevenson, and, and Kyle to, to work up uh, something that listed our attractions. One of the attractions that I would like to see would be at Holmes Meadow Camping Facilities. I think we have to, over time, build our resources up to get people here so that they, on day two of their trip, which they only need four hours or so to do it. They've got six hours they could spend here. And we would like to spend them here, you know, uh, and that and we need, and we're not going to get the traffic because we have a great trailhead, but we're not going to get the overnight traffic until we get camping facilities, you know, backyards or or at Holmes Meadow, get get a hostel, get other people. I really scratching my hair, what I have this of. Um, of how, how in the world we get people to put in the restaurants and the things that people need. But it's in the town's control. And our committee uh, appointed by the town has requested that, that week that uh, Mary Lou, who's out call, and I come to you folks and say, please put us into the Ask LCPC to study the Holmes Meadow Camping facilities there in your engineering studies. Put that in and see where that where that comes out. Uh, they would they would need to talk to us about uh, you know what we would see would need what would be needed you know like what structures fire rings different things like that. But we we'd like you to instruct them. We don't want to go through the process. You know we're your appointees. We were appointed to think about things like this. We'd like you to we'd like you to say 
LCPC to South Jensen, who I talked to about today, who went so far as suggesting that that I volunteer to be to help them with this. But uh, uh, I think that uh, I should like really request that you authorize them to be studying that and that you would be in favor of it if it's working. I, I would add to that. So I had a conversation with Seth Jensen and they are in the process of preparing an RFP and doing services for all time. So he feels that it would be useful to at least advise conceptually um, of some potential uses of Holmes Meadow. Um, so that the engineers can consider that in their um, review and their proposals. Um, in addition to possible camping use, <clears throat> um, David Butler, who was the prior owner, actually deeded to the town um, a path um, along, which used to be part of the class four road um, along the back side of the property. Um, so in, in, in addition to the camping, I think, you know, some means of connecting old Old Bell Park um, and, uh, you know, the, the trail um, would be concept items that the engineers should think mm -hmm. about in terms of the proposal. So is that uh, is that an action item that we're going to make tonight or is this uh, in theory? It's yeah, I think it's a concept. So I think I think at this point we don't have to we don't have to say we want camping there. But I think it would be appropriate to say, would you please consider the possibility or the concept of having, you know, what would it look like if we did, you know, some camping? Same engineers are doing, are lowering it three to seven feet. So they're, they're not only doing the civil engineering part, but while they do that, they want the future plans in mind. So that could be a myriad of things. And this is just, would you keep in mind, access to the rail trail, access to the whole part, Potential for long back in. There's one thing that it is going to do is if you look at that property, it juts out in the river. And by lowering the soil there, you'd actually allow the river to pass through and get out of there so much faster. Yeah. And it, you know, it may, it may that help considerably with ice jam I mean, situations. Uh, so anyway, the, I guess the ask tonight is, do we want to ask LCPC to include in their RFP some concepts? I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah agree. I think we definitely should. You know, and I can we broaden it to maximum recreation, and that could be camping, could be connected to the home of cars. Others. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, probably a good way to describe it is recreation subcategories of, you know, XYZ is yeah. possibility yes. part of the, you know, the river canoe trail or whatever. Yeah, you know, access to the river, some kind of park. So, yeah, so yeah. you can wash away right there. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 We'll be right next to the uh, future right yeah. center. Yeah, sorry. Yes. When I was when I was on the swap board, we, we did the the swap with David Butler for the Fourth Cross Road, and one one of the, he gave us a path a, a, a right away. He also gave us fishing spots and access spots, and so there's a kiosk for for that the a River Conservancy people put in there on Holmes Meadow to, and we were supposed to have two fishing accesses. We only put in one. There's really good fishing there, you know, at the, the bottom end. And there's a very nice ripple, and it's, it's a nice resource. It would be good, you know, that type of, you know, access to the river for recreation. So they don't necessarily want to advertise that you know, the fishing is good here. We, we won't go into the flies in a minute. But there's a lot, we're going to have a lot more river access by next year, you know, oh, yeah. all the yeah. property that's going through the buyout, we're going to have river access like crazy. So I think the other thing that Doug is asking, if I, if I heard him correctly, was, is the board comfortable with having the rail trail committee sort of look at some of these issues and I think they're make recommendations to the yeah, board? Yeah, I think they're better so, suited than we are. Okay, so we'll make recommendations to you to include in, in the Holmes Meadow RFP. 
I think I, I or, got or the, just make them to LC, LCPC. I got the impression that the RFP was going to go out fairly soon and that we should be responsive to that. Um, so, if you know, but if you have specific thoughts or ideas, we're always better that when I talked to Seth, he said this is going to be uh, a work in progress, it's going to take a while to complete. Mm -hmm. So, I think there's going to be ample opportunity for that input um, over the course of time. But I think my sense is the rail committee would be a great place to, for us to get some of that input. Yeah, so we give it to you. Will be a pass through to a very bad year. That makes sense. Yeah. Do we need any specific motion on that, Tom, or do you do you have what you need to to let out CPC? I think just the uh, go ahead and meet now. So. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd like to uh, just just because you don't have enough to do. I have uh, and you probably don't read our minutes, and and Shane has been. Uh, out rooting for the Colorado Avalanche, so he hasn't been able to attend our meetings, but he'll return. But here, you know, I, I mentioned to you that we have we have uh, issues related to you know we got a lot of stuff, infrastructure, information, getting out how, how people find out about what we have, how we get more people services. Here's here's a discussion. We have a really good resource is Eva Rose, and she um, she. Uh, um, it was telling us what she's finding out about. So here you have to find out. We're just touching on a fraction of the stuff that we that we need to to be successful at in order to improve this trail and help us uh, and the users get them into town to make them uh, uh, make it an economic uh, booster. So here you can see kind of what we're touching. On. So can we take this as homework and? Oh uh, yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! yeah I, 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 I didn't think I'd get away with anything else but that. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Um, Tom, the other item that we had was the deed. Do we want to do that now or do we want to? Can we jump ahead to the um, presentation? The land acquisition or the present presentation? Just so they can get out of here. Yeah, we can. We can. So we have uh, the flood. Flood. So we'll move to item six, flood response plan. Is someone here to present on that or? Is, is Hiya, Duncan, it's Ron Rajensky. I, and I Anya, okay. Hello. Hi, uh, Anya, I'll, I'll start it off Sorry. and then turn it over to you. Okay. Okay. You all set, Duncan, we're good? We're good. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. It's Ron Rajensky, Stone Shore Municipal Consulting. Been working with uh, UVM uh, for two semesters in a row now. Uh, no cost to the town of Johnson. That's one of Eben's favorite questions since he's not there. I figured I'd just remind everybody. Uh, so at the beginning of the semester, oh, we decided uh, and I think this, with some input from the board about the lack of plans that are on, on the um, Johnson uh, resource list and with flooding in particular. So last semester it was debris management plan that's drafted, needs more work. This semester it's a response plan, um, which is like the, the precursor to an event. And what do you do at the, at the very start? So um, Anya, Lynn has been working uh, with me since January. This is her last um, to-do list, which is to present her report. Uh, she has finished a draft and turn it over to the town. So I'll let uh, Anya introduce herself and take it from there. Hi, um, I'm Anya. I'm a junior at UVM. I'm studying environmental studies with a minor in green building and community design. So this was definitely right up my alley. I was really into this um, opportunity that I had. So I have drafted a um, Town of Johnson flood response plan, which basically just outlines how to directly, um, like immediately respond to a response plan or to a flood, sorry. Um, 
So yeah, I was just gonna go over the kind of a rough table of contacts. I had sent it to Tom. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the introduction, I kind of just go over pretty basic of just what the rest of the plan is. Um, and the primary goal was just to like outline strategies, processes, and protocols for responding to floods like immediately. Um, and just so we can have a clear plan in place to minimize risks and just coordinate resources efficiently. Um, so that's like the first section, pretty um, rough overview. Um, and then the sec second section is flood scenarios where I go over just basic like flooding scenarios that are possible in Johnson um, that I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with living there. Um, and the big chunk of my response plan and like the most important part is in section three, the operational overview that I really go over specific tasks and processes to immediately respond to the plan. And it goes over different responsibilities and roles for specific um, town officials to do so that there's no like pointing fingers and there's more clear um, response actions and so we know what to do um and yeah there's i basically i go really i don't want to bore you guys too much but it goes really in detail um for like public information strategies so to get information out to the residents and evacuation procedures um it's kind of similar structure to the local emergency management plan but more specific for floods um, and another big section was it was the roles and responsibilities section where that there's one annex that really goes over like specific responsibilities of each town official, which I think is going to be very helpful. And so there's no pointing fingers and there's just specific roles that everyone will know what to do to really make response efficient and easier. Um, it won't be easy, but it will be easier, hopefully. It's um, and yeah, I'm open to any questions. I know that was super vague and it, it, the document goes a lot more into detail, but yeah, I don't know if you have any questions. I don't know if you guys can all see the document, but, um, yeah. Yeah, we're all looking through it. I think, I mean, for me, it's, I'm definitely going to need to read through it, um, yeah. What I'm seeing looks very promising. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess uh, one one question I have, and I'm not I'm not really seeing it in here, is um, when these protocols go into effect. I mean, is it is it something that like some of these things are sort of proactive? Some of them are when we've already declared a state of emergency. Um, and some of them are a little later on, but like one in particular that I know we've had come up here is, um, you know, local law enforcement personnel may conduct door-to-door -door notifications in areas identified as particularly vulnerable to flooding. Is there any, like in your research in, in uh, coming up with this, is there anything that you saw that kind of says, this is when um, this type of a procedure would be implemented? Um, on Honestly, it's that was really hard to find specific timelines like for when I was basing off of other town responses or plans. Um, so there, it's not super clear. I think honestly, I didn't have the expertise to really apply or like say when or the specific timeline. Um, that was really tricky to find. So I know that's definitely still something to work on. And this is super definitely a draft, like there's lots to be um, worked on still, but I don't know, Ron, do you have anything to say with that? Yeah, yeah sure, the, the emergency response protocol, uh, which is uh, I think the, the closest uh, section is 3.2, Shane. Uh, 3.2 starts about, you know, what do select boards members need to do? And, you know, the first bullet is, watch the weather, <laughs> you know, so you're, you're trying not to be surprised kind of thing as, as town leaders, along with the emergency management director. So 
those four bullets in 3.2 are about the rough workout. If you all had very specific uh, concept of what you want, then this is the section to put it in there. For example, maybe only the EMD is responsible for the five to seven day pre-notice and not all the select board members. You know, those are the kind of decisions you're gonna have to make in a final draft. But somebody during any part of the year needs to be the lead uh, watchdog, if you will, of, of these things. During the July flood, you'll remember uh, Roger Marcoux, the sheriff was, was making calls to Johnson saying, Wolcott's going under, you guys have, you know, six hours. So do you put do you put this first bullet on the sheriff? Probably not, but somebody in the town, select board or town administrator, EMD, those those six people, seven people, would be ideally on that first bullet. How they do it could be anything from being in contact with National Weather Service to state to the sheriff, et cetera, monitoring Wilkin. Yeah, Ron, I think you and I talked a little bit on how to elaborate this in the future, that it's that it was really like the baseline draft, and that's some things to come out of it would be bullet points for the EMD. So like at 15 feet, notify River Road West. At 17 feet, activate the shelter. At 18 feet, call, make sure the Red Cross is within 48 hours. So that way, it's decisions are made in the select board meeting before the flood and not in the middle of the crisis. You know, that way... Things that I think that was something that might come out of this, but there's no way on you can know that obviously. Oh, right. you have to them out, right? Yeah, and I, you know, and I was trying to see if other towns had kind of set those metrics and said, you know, this is this is our level. We we would have to figure out our own level, of course, but yeah. Um, but thank yeah, you. The yeah, a National Weather Service does have those thresholds in their emergency notice. So in yeah. Richmond, for example, they'll say. You know, flood prediction at uh, 17 feet. Uh, Bridge Street will be closed at that point. So people watching flood elevation know when certain roads will be closed. So I think that's what Tom's referring to. If there's some critical infrastructure items that can be incorporated into this 3.2 or what the EOC does when they're activated, uh, so much the better for sure. So I think the takeaway is that we all need to look at this and do our homework. Yeah, and, more homework. Yeah, it's how many pages? Uh, and who would we report back to initially, Tom, Ron, on this? Or yeah. do you want comments to go directly to you or what? Yeah, I think Tom is the point of contact for feedback. And as he receives either public comments or select board comments, uh, He'll figure out how to how to deal with all that. The 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 like I said, the, this is sort of phase two. The recovery plan Tom and IRC have been talking about, which are major projects and things within the town. That 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 middle part, which are, which is really critical, is what Anya mentioned, which was the table of roles and responsibilities for town officials. If there's any part of this document that you spend time on, look look at the roles and responsibilities and train on those to make sure that person knows what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, you know, now's a good time to train for the next flood. I assume, I assume somewhere in here there is a strong emphasis on documentation. Yes. Because that's a big is a huge takeaway of mine. Just document every single thing that we spend money or do or and take pictures and save every document. That's yes, it. definitely. I found that that's super important in a bunch of other like towns that have done that. They really emphasize, emphasize like from the very beginning and like even before you start any re repair, like take pictures of everything and document oh, yeah. everything. It's super important. Because of this process and Ron working with Jason, Jason now wants to train these guys quarterly and how to respond. Yeah, he's like on fire and then 
working with Jason and Ron to make the timesheet match the FEMA reporting requirements. So that way, what we do in real time is what we turn into FEMA to get reimbursed. So there's no, you're not looking at mid -week, you're not looking at two timesheets for one, one before, it's just done. Yeah. What he does every day, you just make a photocopy and make a photo. Yeah. So it really brought a lot of good changes to the town. Thank you, Anya. Um, I think we also need to, in terms of what Ron just mentioned, the roles and responsibilities, we need to look at our limp, which is on the agenda, for Ron to make sure that they are in sync. Yeah. <clears throat> the other piece that I think is super cool, you think about floods, there's three stages. There's like the response, which this is so 24 hours before, or five to seven days before, so like 72 hours after. And then there's debris management from 72 hours to two months. And so like we have the plans now from the five days before the flood to two months after the flood. And then we're already in the process of creating that RIC conversation we had a month ago or two weeks ago. Now we're creating that recovery and how do we like go and put that water again? We also like, we're, this is putting us in great shape for like you know so that way the next select board doesn't matter who they are all they got to do is all direct grass exercise yeah. and we're getting new river gauges <clears throat> upstream right this is bad you yeah. 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 applications was made congressional delegate fund so I, I would not believe the National Weather Service. Well, those gauges would be great. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if we can get tied into that one they're gonna put in Volga, for example, that would be really useful. That would be super important. And in light of the conversation we had with the seniors tonight, um <laughs> yeah, we might as well think of that. How to how to incorporate that. How to incorporate that into this document too. Good. Good work. All right. Well, thank you, folks, for um, presenting that. And I guess the, the takeaway is we'll be back in touch. Yeah. Good work. That's good. Yeah. That works for us. Thank, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. All right. Um, Noel, are you here about the um, bio? Or do you have to see the list of that? I'm not presenting. Okay. Is anybody here presenting on the, oh, buy up. on the um, purchase of the paper property? And we're here. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead and agenda to that point just so we could potentially get you guys out. We do. We do have the information in our packet, so I'm going to ask you to be as brief as you can. Yes. <clears throat> cool. um, I'm Gunnar Nerney, President of the Coordinator of the Regional Law Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. I'm uh, joined here by I'm Molly Flanagan. I'm the Director of Land Conservation with the Green Mountain Club. And Bob Paquin representing the Paquin family. So FPR and GMC are working on a land conservation project in Johnson uh, to protect 13 acres of Bob's family's land on Plot Rains. Um, FBR looks for town support for all of our projects. Uh, so it's just you know, a standard process that for us. Um, but yeah, 13 acres on Pot Road. The entire parcel that Bob and his family own is around 15 acres. They're not split into three lots. And this land conservation project concerns two of those lots, as you can see on the map. Um, one of the three lots has a camp on it and was sold separately. Um, we're buying the two undeveloped lots. Uh, one of which is around two and the other is something like acres. Um, so the plan is that um, GMC is going to buy the land this spring from the Paplins using uh, money from FPR's Log Trail, Log Trail Protection Fund. Um, and then GMC is going to hold the land until we finish our due diligence. Um, and then they're going to transfer the land to us along with the GMC home conservation. Um, so that's what the project looks like from that standpoint. Um, the reason the land is important is mainly because it contains 300 feet of log trail treadway, um, along with forest land to buffer the log trail, um, which Molly will, Molly will speak to that importance. Um, and it also just adds 13 acres of good quality forest land to the long trail state forest, which the land is adjacent to, uh, which will 
increase the ability of the state forest to act as um, you know, a good forest ecosystem for wildlife habitat um, and whatnot, and will also increase management access um, for the state to access the state forest. Did I hear you say that initially the Green Mountain Club would purchase and then it would be yeah. transferred to the yeah. state of North? Yeah, and that's something we do often um, because um, our nonprofit partners are often are often able to move a lot quicker than we are. Yeah. Um, so does that have any tax implications depending on how long Green Mountain Club owns it or retains it? Um they shouldn't own it long enough to have any tax tax implications. Um we're hoping to the state is hoping to like file a rank in the Green Mountain Club hopefully by the end of the year. Um and the way taxes work with the state, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the the state doesn't pay property taxes or technically I'm very familiar with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we make a payment in lieu of taxes that's yeah. designed to compensate you the same. And they're periodic. It basically freezes the tax rate at the current rate, and then there's periodic adjustments. Exactly. So um, I think in the packet, it's estimated around $500. I'll just state that it's GMP's practice to pay property taxes. So um, while we do own it, while we hope it won't be very long, um, we're going to be paying the assessment. Bob, do you want to speak to your family's history here? Excuse me, it's a it's kind of bittersweet. My uh, family bought this camp in 1975, and then excuse me, my father bought that adjacent woodland from Edgar Emory a few years later, and uh, then bought the last piece, which is would provide better access to the woodland, uh, and. We, um, father passed away in 2018, uh, was last up there at age 98. And uh, uh, we thought we were going to uh, improve it. And we went right through with new electrical, new uh, plumbing, a new heat heating system. And then, I don't know, between COVID and um, our family uh, losing interest. Uh, we decided to to let it go, and that's going to be the last um, uh, the last vestige of my late father's estate. And uh, he was really proud to host the long trail, and he I just we just thought it'd be a natural thing to do. And uh, I put an ad in the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Digest, and out of the blue, uh, we had a lot of people look at the camp. And they wanted to uh, live in a year round. It's it's a deer, camp. you know. It's it's not a year round home. And uh, anyway, uh, out of the blue, somebody must have read that ad and uh, the camp's now been sold. So these last two parcels, and uh, we can satisfy the uh, our financial uh, obligations to the heirs and move on. But uh, anyway, it's, it's kind of a tough thing to do. But fake one, fake one for that was my brother. Oh, it's bro. Okay. Yeah, he's retired and sold the dealerships. Okay. Um, and he's coming back from Florida, I think, tonight. Otherwise, he'd be here. <laughs> I can tell you. Do we have any uh, additional questions, or are you ready to make the motion? I, did, I just have a question. Where is this in relation to Round Hot? It's just, just I hiked up there just yeah. two hours. Okay. Yeah, so it's just Round Top Shelter is just south. Of this property, so you hiked over this property. Um, so I went up to the third the way up. Where is this camp on the plot road? Yes, yeah, it's thirty six thirty nine. Just past. It's just yeah. past the um the round top access on the left. Yeah, you wouldn't see it if you were only hiking on the long trail. But no, but I you see the, the camp though. See the deer camp. Not yeah. if you're well. If you get to the edge, if you get to the edge of the ridge, you can see the the metal roof. Uh, you know, span on the season. Is the camp right on Plot Road? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's like three camps that are pretty close together. Then, right? uh, there's two. The two. red one was ours, and then the, uh, the one next door, the original owner sold his brother in law a little piece, and he built the deer camp there. Okay. And then I think Lesage is, is down the road. Right. Okay. So the camp is not part of the sale, but the, the camp property the camp is sold behind, behind the camp. Okay. Yeah. So it's behind. Yeah, this map is confusing. Wonderful. Um, what kind of motion do you need from the board that we uh, accept? 
the proposition that this can even be um, sold to the Green Mountain Club. I think you guys are just looking for an affirmative yeah. action on the board that it's just that the town of Johnson supports that here. Yeah. Position mm -hmm. is, is there actually a letter that we're supposed to sign? I have a like copy here. Oh, if you have one, if you have one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. And if, here we go. Either sign it now or yeah. Tom has an email. All right. So it would be, I guess the motion would be to uh, sign the approval letter for the purchase of uh, the fake of the property. I will make a motion to authorize Duncan to sign said letter. We have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right. All the vote nay. Aye. 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 Tom, are you able to make a copy of this and then give it give it right back? Do it. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to try and get back to the agenda. Um, Tom, should we wait? I, we've got other people waiting. Should we do the deed as the last item of business? Oh, yeah. I don't think anyone's waiting for that. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the school street traffic. Are you here yep. on the school street traffic? So I, I just wanted to say in advance of this item that um, this has come up. Numerous thank you, folks. Thank you. Uh, thank you for thank what you're you. doing. The issue has come up a number of times. Um, Part of the issue is um, in the past, people wanted to have designated a school zone at 15 miles an hour, and state law sets a minimum miles per hour of 20 miles per hour for a school zone. Um, I'm certainly willing to consider designating a school zone. We would have to work with the school district, I think, to and the statute in terms of designating that the length of the school zone. I think there's specific requirements in statute. Um, there are currently speed limit signs out there. There's one post that I suspect at one time has children crossing sign on it, which is empty. So we could certainly ask Jason to, you know, deal with that and. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the rest of the board's feeling is on it, but those are certainly things that I think, you know, could and should do consideration of your concern. We were we were without any speed limits on this until just after the village annual meeting. Um, my wife and I had a conversation with Eric, and I don't know where he took it from there, but I think it was within a week. There were speed limit signs, um, which is great. Um, but this, I, I think, um, in addition to the signage we're talking about, um, this has gone on for quite some time. Uh, people are in the habit of moving at a certain pace. Um, and I think, I personally think it's going to take more than the appearance of some signs, at least for the honest folks. Um, one of those flashing your speed is. Um, I don't know what to do about the racetrack. <laughs> but um, maybe the sheriff can come back. I think we certainly could and should ask the sheriff to do some speed patrols. Yeah. Have you reached out to the sheriff? Mm -hmm. Have you reached out to the sheriff? Yeah, um, some. And, you know, they've been responsive, but got a lot of turf to cover. Yeah. So, and it, honestly, the, the time that the kids are out there is shift change uh -huh. for the for the yeah. sheriff's department. That's always been their reason for not being out there when yeah. the kids are out there. Yeah. 
to me, that's a bit of an excuse, but um, well, uh, they do have a couple of student resource officers that can be at different schools or different times of the day. So, you know, do they have radar? Radar training and can they issue speeding tickets? That's a great question. I yeah. don't know the answer. But let's lot. reach out to I would let's reach so. out to the sheriff's department. And I also request think, additional. Do we have a motion to designate that a school zone, like to get the ball rolling on that, or is that something that like you can reach out? And I was just going to ask, could I meet with Jason and David Manning and just start the conversation just that way and. Uh, Dylan Lafleur from the SU, and just get the conversation started. If they have any ideas as well, and at least get their them on board. I, I would, I would, I would recommend that that would be a reasonable approach, and let Tom investigate what the specific requirements are desi of designating us, you know, okay. school zone are, um, and then come back to the board with, you know, proposal to, you know, to to do that. I, I think that you're probably correct in terms of the radar speed signs. Mm -hmm. They are expensive um, and they tend to be really problematic in terms of maintenance. Um, but they work. They do work. Yeah. They, I think they, they help. They actually yeah. work on me. Yeah, I think they help. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's well but you're an honest person. Right. The Your honest, caveat was the work for the honest people. Right. And, yeah. and I do think that a lot of the people who are going down School Street at 35 are, they're not people who are meaning to turn it into a racetrack, but, you know, they, they just are, yeah, they're, they're focused not, on something else. Um, I'm sort of like an all of the above person where I think like the signs, the flashers, the like, Flashing uh, uh, yield for pedestrian signs. There's even, you know, we can take it up the road in certain places to make it so, like, it's physically difficult for a car to drive through that fast. Well, it already is the sidewalk yeah. where they cross. Yeah, already they is the right. Um, yeah. But could we but, ask yeah. Tom to report back to us yes. on everything, including, you know, the cost of the, uh, you know, the radar speed control signs? You know, I think, I think it's would be a good package for us to think about. Does that great? Thank you. Help? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have a sign that doesn't work because it's in the shade and the cocaine is up here. Yeah, that, that, I think there's more issues than just that. I think that's one of those ongoing maintenance issues. The one I hear seems to work fine, but I know, I know this. We don't we don't want to control that. That's fifty. That's V trends. Yeah, um, and I don't think they're real good at. The town that the day is did the state is some responsibility of ongoing maintenance or are we supposed to? And now I remember the sheriff's department got grades for them. Well, another thing for you to look in at them because if that I just said I always assumed that that was. The state's responsibility for the maintenance land and it just wasn't getting done. So well, it's our responsibility. <clears throat> that would be good. It would be, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Next to village streets. Right. You ask Eric in all the town things we drive by. Yeah. When I was on the school board, we had a position for a crossing guard in front of the elementary school during before and after school and doesn't help the speeding problem, but it does help provide an important safety component. I think we're there. checking in with the school board and it's probably not the good time to ask for after <laughs> funding for anything from them, but- They um, still do that as far as I know. Do they still do that? Yeah, Is there still so. a crossing guard out there? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can only speak for my school, Cambridge, but we have teachers who go out and assist with that anytime the students need to cross the road. So I, I assume it's probably, a similar thing for pickup. It was a separate, it was a, an employed position, not not a teacher. I, I can't. There's a, a teacher, I think it's the art teacher who's part time. It's an art teacher. Yeah. The other half of her job, or some portion of it, is also to work at that crosswalk that's at the co college hill end. Oh, cool. So there's something, yeah. something yeah. like that going on. There's something no, like that going on. A lot of school employees are split duty like that. So, yeah. yeah. 
surprised kids walking in. All right, well, they don't. They get picked up. <laughs> but they still have, you know, they have to cross the street. They might not be walking car. uphill both ways, you know, <laughs> but they, yeah. they walk one. Like I do. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I, I mean, all right, can we? I think we're back to the question of the item seven Johnson flood response plan. Yeah. Can you want to give us a little update on? Well, I think it's just more of like getting it out to the public that there's a lot of moving parts and that the future of the municipal building or the library, sewage treatment facility, the store, the store, and they're all tied together, right? All right. So we're for months, we looked at this as each individual project under a microscope. And very recently, conversations have started that kind of look at Johnson as a whole. And that's kind of that IRC meeting discussion we had is that um, June, the last select board meeting anyways, started it, right? So the conversation's moving on what is, <clears throat> now we're looking at all four of these places, all in package up. Right, because the library might move to Legion Field, that now opens up an opportunity to build new municipal offices. If we move the municipal offices from here, and now opens up this piece of property to be the most cost effective location for the new sewage treatment facility, which is going to save millions of dollars of pipes and pumping, which is going to pay for that building in itself, the new municipal complex or the library. Which then now all is a safe. Now that's well, this is act. this is not me, you know, this is like from other people, well, anyway, okay, but it's just like. So moving things around, you know, all these vaults, the pump that they use are 750,000, right? And it would eliminate X number of pumps per year. So that's why it's a huge savings. So where that is at the mouth of the Gaia, and that opens that up for floodwater storage. Where the memorial backs into the store is now open for floodwater storage to protect the store because we moved the sewage treatment facility. And we just got some bio properties in the library on the other side of the river, right? So they're it's all now coming together as like this larger Holmes Meadow. Holmes Meadow, right across the river, the skate park across the river from that. All of a sudden, things are moving quicker. And it's all kind of hinging on that sewage, the engineering for the sewage treatment facility. But it just, you know, the public should be aware and you guys should be aware that there's a lot of options that might fall in your lap with a very short timeline for decisions. And that's you know I think it, I think it's worth talking about in the public meeting just to say hey this this is happening we might have a few dollars to help Johnson get off the river and it might cost us next to nothing which is exciting. And the sewage treatment plant just can't raise itself up where it where it sits. I I'm not on I that hearing, side. I keep hearing that you know. Just to add the second floor, move the infrastructure up. That's not our circus, not our monkey. Exactly. You know, all, all I know is well, that it's our monkey that they're going to move. Well, exactly. And and here's the other piece: is nothing can happen. The sewage treatment center can't move here. If you guys don't say yes. The municipal complex can't move if both courts don't say yes. The library can't move if court doesn't say yes. You know, all these things can't happen unless we're all on the same page with very short timelines. And so that's why it's like why we need to start thinking about these ideas. And if you have others, let's get it out to the people who make the big decisions, the engineers, and so forth. But the library doesn't have anything to do with the village. No, right. So that movement is ours. Yeah. And we're building that plumbing stack to try to get it done. Okay. When are we at? Is it like end of May? Hold on, no. Late spring or early summer. We're, we're like in that wheelhouse any day now. We should find out whether or not we're going to get that in point five. And then there's discussion of moving the library, possibly relocating the town offices in the vicinity of the library. Yes. To build the new, to move the library is 1.58. To build a second story is only an additional 560,000. How much is McClellan? Like change. Hey, that's... Like that? Yeah. How much is McClellan? Well, it's already been sold. Oh, it has? Okay. Yeah. Memorial Housing Partnership. I thought, yeah, they bought Martin. I heard they bought McClellan. I don't think any sales gone through. Okay. Nothing's yeah. fine. What do you mean? Nothing's gone Nothing through. Nothing's gone through. Okay. Well, but it wasn't Martin Eddy that they were looking at. It was McClellan. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It makes sense. 
for it to be Mark Nettie. I don't know. I had heard it they couldn't be Mark Nettie. Mark Nettie's up at Mark Nettie's up at the top of the hill. Uh, you know, I don't know if that makes a difference to that college. Yeah. Well, that's the admin building for the entire college, isn't it? Isn't it Martin Eddie? I think a lot of that stuff's moved into Dewey, but yeah, it's probably not Martin Eddie. Okay. So no, nothing's going through. Yeah. The article in the paper, for whatever, whatever it's worth, said not so. Well, I don't think it said anything. I don't think it said anything. I thought it said something. Okay. I remember saying the dollar figure and for a building on the Johnson campus. But, but getting back to my bonus. Trying to piece this whole puzzle together. Library, possible town offices connected to the library, possible sewage treatment plant at this location. Have you told the seniors about this? <laughs> well, you know, I wish I wish they were here because you know I was I was on the phone with Duncan and he said, Tom, you have to bring this up to the board. And I, of course, let's do it at the next meeting. And then he said, you know, you need to look at the deed. And it's you know, Duncan had their back like earlier this week when I was putting the agenda together. And I, it's too bad they're not here to, to hear that. Well, the thing is, is that yeah. this building becomes a sewage treatment plant. And what's in that deed? Well, I think it's certainly a concern, right? And like maybe, maybe they get a steady the bill which will have to provide the senior space. Well, like, <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, I, I mean, mean I'm like, just trying to pull this puzzle together. And there's a lot of moving parts. And the nice thing is, so uh, we started two conversations with um, the chief recovery officer. Yeah, but I saw that. And then uh, under him is what's called the IRC, the Intergovernmental Relations Committee. And they're now having their eyes on Johnson too. And so whatever, I think it's all hinging on the search treatment center right now. But the call, and there needs to be a cost benefit analysis, right? Mm -hmm. In a single cost benefit analysis, the largest number is going to come out of where that ends up. So right now we're looking at 27 million. That could shave off X number of million. That pays for any new building. At which point there's going to be a team of people to help us get that. It, 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 it pays for a new building if, uh, if we're able to use that savings. Correct. You need the cost benefit analysis. That's why it's all hinging on the sewage treatment center. One other question is, so we got the survey back on this building in the 500 year, 499 and a half feet of the 500 year floodplain in the base of the wood right here. And this building is 500 feet. Even. So we are half a foot above, above the, the 500 year the, floodplain. The 1987 floodplain, correct. I think those maps might be out of date. <laughs> Well, I think that no, I, I think that's probably pretty close for the 500 year flood. This flood event exceeded the 500 year flood. Yeah, and so I think it's the question that's really a shame is like there's new maps that are draft form waiting to come out. Come out. And when those numbers finally come out, where is that 500 year? Where is the 100 year? You know, we've had three flood or two flood, two floods in 100 years that came here. It, What's what's that new line? And then so are we going to spend X number of thousands of dollars to mitigate a building within a hundred year floodplain? But you know, two weeks ago it was a five hundred year floodplain, just a national release. You know, like we're waiting on a, like again a bureaucratic release of maps and not we don't have any better data, so we have to work on what to work with. But mm -hmm. well, we know when we need the flood line when it's inside the building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Maybe, maybe that's not well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what, what's difficult for me is that, like, I hear what you're saying about the, the the potential, right, of us taking all of these different moving pieces and and using this as an opportunity to say, okay, where do we really, where do we want these? Where is it going to be safe? Where is it going to to the point Diana made earlier? Where are we not going to be flooded in the same buildings in ten years? And I see that, and then I see the the need that we have to move quickly on some of these things to get this building reopened, which means putting a bunch of money into this building to find space for the library, which means you know. So there, yeah. there's there's, there's yeah. that I and I, I don't I don't know that we can it without bringing in some outside help, you know, someone to actually like take a look from a, a 
10,000 foot level and, and give us a plan, I, I don't know that we're able to actually get those moving pieces where they need to, especially with the added piece of like, there's another board that we have to negotiate these things with who would love yeah. it if we gave them this property for free to build a new wastewater facility on, but you know, there's, 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 yeah, over there, you know, there's a lot so, of moving parts, yeah, and like there's, there's a lot that I probably should share during the week that I don't because there's so many moving parts and I'll take responsibility for that. But like, I meet almost daily with Rosemary and, and Eric and just kind of skew what's going on. And we looked at the grand list to figure out what the buyout price was. So when Eric goes to his engineers and his FEMA crew, his um, they they know that part of the cost of construction is buying out half the town and so it's like it is being factored in and like and that we with the library moving to legion field we're getting lidar data to say where is the 500 year plane and actually where is the 500 year plan plane going to be with the new max so that way we're actually above and beyond so the steps are being put in place we put mitigation on hold for this building so we've, we've got it restored to free flood there's a checklist that uh, Susie, Susie and Marla put together of like, they went downstairs and looked and said, hey, we have XYZ unfinished item. So like, we're now on the final checklist for the downstairs of this building to be completed. Uh, once that's done, furniture will move in, but we're not gonna touch the outside of the building until we know what's gonna happen. And so we've already talked to FEMA and the State Vermont Emergency Management about how to put an extension for an additional 18 months. So that we have the option to do mitigation 18 months after next December. So, another two years. So, we have two years essentially to make that jump. Are we going to spend 100000 on this building to stay, to stay in place? Or are we going to just hold off, see what's going to happen, and maybe put that 100000 towards a new location? And so, there's time for those decisions to be made. And we're doing everything we can to like hold it off. Um, it's just we want to make sure that whatever we do, we spend the money once, right? You know? And that those decisions now are getting there's more and more players that are getting bigger and bigger. I mean, you know, is it right for the town to stop the sewage treatment center to come here when it's saving taxpayers millions of dollars? You know, so that's like saving taxpayers millions. Well, well, saving the same wastewater treatment facility users. Well, I, I yeah. and, and you, through uh, FEMA, yeah, yeah, federal taxpayers, yeah, not necessarily Johnson residents in that perspective, but. And I, you know, I, I certainly like. I don't want either board to be like in the position of stopping something that needs to happen. What I guess what I'm getting at is like, we probably need some scoping work done to figure out like, is like, are these types of big changes possible? How would we like? Where would we cite such thing? You know, that yes, maybe this is a good place for the new, um, you know, the wastewater facility. But if we are going to potentially have the new office buildings, et cetera, like, you know, what is that going to look? That 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 needs to be done, and, and in the place we're in, we can't be doing. It, you know, we probably need to hire outside. Yeah, and I think that help is actually coming. It's it's just a great, um, and that's that's that, like that. that's that intergovernmental religion, uh, intergovernmental uh, recovery committee. So they're they're helping form that. You know, and that we have the consultants with the engineering that are we're all paying. You know, like they're. That's what that's who's guiding the ship. The two shooting facilities looking at three or four locations, and whichever one comes in, whatever they say is the best. We might not be having this conversation in two weeks. They might say, "Hey, we want to put it down by the pump station at the end of Western Drive," and then this conversation's over, and we stay in this building and pay for the mitigation, and we pay the two point two percent match, and we walk away, and we're not. But uh, but it might not. They might say it's here, and we need to start this conversation up in two weeks. And I think it's fair that. Everybody's in the know about all the all the stuff. Yeah, I like to hear it from you before I read it. I mean, it's, 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 there you go. And so, so, which is how I found out we they were looking at properly in the sweet treatment plant in the light industrial. Yeah, factory. we're giving the link out to Merrick saying, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that that was my point is we need to bring the board and the public along on these. Absolutely, I, I know it's moving fast Ooh. to the extent that we can. Um, you know, some things we may have, and I think maybe a running agenda item just to like there's a lot of stuff that I move so fast, I don't even have forward. You know, I'm reading, and, and maybe that's a one way of yeah. I think it's it. maybe in your, your report to the board, or you know, this update out this full, full picture is yeah. important. Yeah, I think you're immersed in it, so it's like. <laughs> 
You're yeah. hitting it every day. That's not regular yeah. Really yeah. We're yeah. kind of out there. Uh, you know, you know what's going on. We do. Yeah. If we don't yeah. know, and we hear about it at the post office. That's not good. Yeah, no. Sarah. But then, there, then the rumor mill, and you're right. like, oh my God, they're going to put a twenty foot cement wall around the post office building. Yeah. And then, so I think having a, a a continuing agenda item, or you know, a continuous report, you know, item in your report. Yes. Yeah. Is really good yeah. idea. The it's walls just, here have ears. Very much so. I do. Yeah. All right, everybody okay. good? Oh, yeah. Uh, that was that was interesting. Oh, okay. man. All right. Uh, um, what did you? Oh, no, gosh. Oh, last one, the last one. Oh, 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 I think what Evan is hoping that's in the packet or was in the packet. Yes. I think Evan was hoping that we could review and approve that and if needed, make changes as we're going forward. So and is that um, at all integrated with the flood? It is not. Well, I'm saying it's not. We don't know. I'm not absolutely sure. The flood, that flood recovery plan is supposed to flood response plan. Is supposed to reference the people on the map. So the length is like a document required by the state, but it doesn't really tell you what to do. It does a little bit, but not the paragraphs with this other plan. That's right. It's like that way the emergency management director doesn't have to have a conversation. There's already making a predetermined decision. Yeah. It won't be long before we're required to have one of the yeah. Like, which makes sense. It really does make sense. I was driving around kind of yes. <laughs> thinking about flood preparation. But could we, um, could we, understanding that we may well need to have changes right. <laughs> to the LMP, LEMP, can we? This is a good lead in for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard Do you, is your concern specific to approving Not the LEMP the plan? The other plan, not the lab, the other plan. Okay. So this this topic of discussion is giving conceptual, giving approval to the LEMP understanding that we will be revisiting it and making changes. But I think in hardly way. I think there are some reporting requirements that we have to comply with or submission requirements. That yeah. Evan was getting nervous about me. Mm -hmm. I think if there's a deadline, maybe June 1st or something. Like that. So, yeah. So, does anybody want to make a motion to approve the plan as it appears? In the... I will make that motion. I will second that motion. Is there any discussion about the motion to approve the plan to the full understanding? Yes, We're going to be back. Right. Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And I you will prove you win. Did you guys have something that you want to bring for our attention with regard to the other plan? There's a couple things. The other plan, just before we get into the real reason we came, the other plan though, um, the actual plan for responding to a flood, yes. At some point, LCPC is going to be holding a meeting with many different towns to have to talk about collaboration in emergency response. So that was the thing I wanted to contribute to this to the plan discussion. That's great. Um, yeah. Is this coming out of your meeting with LCPC? It's just it's a little while ago. PC yeah. tonight. Yes. Yeah. Did yeah. you hear anything about that earmark for river gauges? Yeah, we talked about earmark for Richard River Gages. Yes, it's been right. submitted. The request has been the, uh, submitted. LCPC is to Senator Welch's office put in for 10 river gauges, Ooh. and they would be up and down the Lamar as well as some of the major tributaries. So, probably there are certain conditions that have to be there, like it can't be gravel and sandy type of sediment, it's going to be rock bed. But uh, the guy on would potentially be one of those. Uh, would have the river gauge on it as well as 
all the way up to World Bet down to King Bridge. And there can't be obstructions. I forgot the word the they bridge use. Bridge abutment yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. Can't be here. Then. I believe LCPC's proposal indicated collaborating, collaborating with the National Weather Service, whoever it is. USGS monitors those yes. to determine. USGS the and the National Weather Service were all in support too. Yeah. The other piece of that is the USGS has a mobile emergency mobile response unit that folks just need to be aware of in the event we want to enable such unit, they would need a couple of days notice, but that's a, a possibility. Uh, cost or anything like that isn't known yet, so there's more to come on that, but um, it is possible. Now are you ready for the big? Well, um, I think if we're going to shoehorn it in anywhere, it's probably going to be on this discussion. So, right. well, you're not technically on the agenda. If you, if you could make a reasonable justification to tie it into the okay, we will. Plan. We do appreciate you giving this uh, this time to us because I know you guys got a busy schedule. The hard stop deadline is June nineteenth. Nineteenth. I was going to figure date. It's close to the nineteenth. Mid June. And there's $91 million at stake. And some of the things that we've identified in these meetings is going to, it has to be applied for by a municipality. So the things that we've identified that would be Johnson centric LCPC will be getting those to you guys, as well as developing more ideas that you may have on some flood mitigation. Uh, these are, uh, Initial applications, just pie in the sky type of things. Um, mitigation related. So this is all flood mitigation planning related. Any flood mitigation planning related activities upstream or in the community or downstream, basically within the watershed. If there are ideas around those, um, what those projects could be, this is a pre-application stage. There are criteria for qualifying but they're trying to get a sense of what that pre-application demand is. And that's what that mid-June deadline is, is to make sure that we have put forth ideas around flood mitigation, what that impact will be. That is gonna take some of the ideas that came out of the flood mitigation planning activities that we just left from and from the prior meeting um, and compile them, or somebody else at PC is gonna compile them and um, put a little bit of an impact factor on them um, to help you know, to help the towns understand what the biggest impact could be for those mitigation efforts so that there's a good approach to what to submit to the state for these funds. Um, and it's 91 dollars, 91 million for the state, I believe. Uh, it's not specific right. for Mill County, but we're very high in the ranking for qualified counties, our town and other towns like us in our county are very high in that list of um, likely to get funds. So that 91 million includes construction projects as well. It does. It's not just plan. Um, it is about, it's flood mitigation projects from what I understand, yes. So it can be construction too, yeah. And the other thing that um, I we asked about was in terms of like those ideas, the ownership, who submits the application, like Eric said, the municipalities have to be the ones to submit it. If you need LCPC support and submission, you need to make sure you're talking to them about it. And then there was also a suggestion because they're probably gonna be pretty stretched thin in helping with these kinds of things uh, that towns work with the BEM. And I asked if the towns know who their BEM contact for something like this would be. The answer was maybe not. But if you don't know who your BEM contact is, then LCPC can help uh, ensure that you have the right person. I think that's a really important factor because if the BEM is going to help with uh, those projects and understand the impact of those projects and possibly even technical assistance around the projects, we're probably going to have to utilize both LCPC and the state. So, you folks being Johnson resident, do you have ideas of right off the top of your head of mitigation projects that mm -hmm. 
a couple of simple ones that I expect will be coming. Uh, and both Beth and I are supportive of this is all these properties that have been in the buyout. Mm -hmm. Part of the buyout, if they're approved, would be lowering the grade. So they have to have two feet of grade lowered on that property. That would absorb, would have space for a lot of water to go. That's one. Uh, some high in the sky, more uh, bigger picture look, I guess. It, and I'll give the credit to Dave Williams. It's a, the best way I can describe it is a barge concept where it's, it's it would be underneath a building and this could be as large as something like the, uh, the market and it's anchored in a certain way and, uh, and allows for the, to rise. So when the water comes in underneath it, it just lifts the whole, you know, market up where it stays above the water. And then when the water recedes, it goes back down. Well, wow. and he's seen these things he has, over sure. seas. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and apparently they work. Another yeah. way. I mean, there's expense obviously in that, but maybe that's something to look at. You know, those and kind the of Army things. Corps of Engineers will be part of this process too, which is a big factor in having discussions like these big ideas. Yeah. The other things that came up were the mines that we have around town were flooded to prevent for safety reasons. Should we be emptying the waters to allow for flood waters to take be taken in and you know rinse and repeat kind of a thing over yeah. time? Um so you pump it, water up to the mine river? The river no, the pump mine, water out right over here. Right by the town garage is the mine to the each yeah. <clears throat> Can you imagine something like that? There might be some toxic waste. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so anyway, these are, these are ideas, yeah. right? And the other things that we talked about were restrictions in different points in the river. So restriction by the Hogback Bridge, restrictions by Dog's Head on both the upper side and lower side of Dog's Head, because on either side of the river, on the lower side particularly, um, there was the mill on one side and there was the, a mill on the other side. So there were man-made facilities and structures on either side of the river? Did that result in the river narrowing at all over time? Don't know. Is it something we should look at? Maybe, maybe not, don't know. Um, so there are lots of ideas like that. In addition to the other things that I know that everybody's been talking about, like buyouts of properties to allow for winding. Um, what about us in winding here? If you talk to Joe the whole year, he'll tell you that the bridge down on Route 15. Is that's six, on the list. Six feet lower than it basically is a dam at the end of our time. That's on the list as well. Because that seems to me, if that is, if that's a fact, and that's a dam for the whole valley. Yeah, that, there's a way it's been. And then they talked about the um, Fairfax Dam and the like, Fairfax Dam and talked about more still rivers or river. Green River Reservoir um, and and changing the use from electricity generation to sure. flood mis flood mitigation dam. Like so Brightsville dam, right. East Berry dam, flood control. And that to me is all part of this river watershed system. Like, okay, we know we're in trouble. More so lower the dam, lower the water in Lake Lamoille. As far as you can go. Um, and Wolka is doing things already, like they're already working on grant to remove some abutments upstream from them. Yeah. That's tearing up some of their roads um, and looking at other uh, widening of bridged areas. Is that Dan in Wolka, the hardwood electric homes? Is that, is that just lower the river or is there an ability to lower? That didn't come up. That didn't come up. You wouldn't, you wouldn't pay as much flood control. By the way, I I don't know. I don't yeah. know whether it's flow of the river or whether there's eighty feet of river behind me. Future meetings, they are inviting hardwood, so maybe some of those discussions the answers. So a more fundamental question: you you said something about a June nineteenth deadline. Yes, for the ninety-one million. Yes, that's... that doesn't make any sense to me because you know there's we're still working on the forty million. Yeah. So. That's currently in the pot. 
Yeah, understood. It's, it's a different pot of money and it is for mitigation efforts and but they haven't even distributed have they? So what I don't, do we need to do to apply for this? I thought the state was getting their first FEMA payment from that initial pot of money back before I was off the board. I thought that was happening. I heard it was happening. I don't know if it happened, but you know, there's a whole bunch of layers of people in the middle of it. It's our FEMA applications being accepted, as we all know painfully well, uh, and then the distribution from the state. I don't know if you have an update on that. Yeah, we haven't received anything yet. So when you talked with Doug Farnham and the VEM folks, have they have they referred to that ninety one million dollar pot, or are they? I think this was a sixty. I think it was a sixty nine million dollar pot, part of the Swift Current grant. Yeah, yeah, that's like uh, earlier waves of funding. That was waves. <laughs> that was due on. I think it was like April thirtieth was the deadline for that. Yeah. yeah, this is different funding. Yeah, this is different funding. It's not the full application. It's a pre application, and that pre application has that mid to later June deadline. It's either the 19th or the 21st. So what do we need to do? What nothing right now is mostly just FYI aware LCPC will be reaching out to you with some of the thoughts on what has come out of this group. Um then probably either some brainstorming sessions with your select board or the community for input on some other thoughts and add and it'll be your application. But I think the thing you need to do is know that when you do get that list from LCPC, you're going to want to think and act quickly. And That's the message. Is this something in the village if you're also talking to the village about? We have not. We uh, should. Have, have, they been, have they been sending anybody to Gigi? Beach was going to some of the initial ones. Is everybody from BJ was on, he didn't stay, but he didn't stay. BJ was on the start, but he dropped pretty quickly. Yeah. So I'm not sure what level of engagement there. They did mention that Eric was planning to go. Maybe he couldn't. Come. I don't know. He did not. He wasn't there. It's not damaging. Yeah, I mean that's that's another issue of the town village saying almost all the damage is in the village, not in the town. So how much effort should we be putting in? Us being the ones who will take ownership of the bought out properties, you know, we at the very least on that piece, that's us. But yeah. I, I think maybe one way to look at it is yes, the benefit is for the village, but when there's a flood, who pays for it? It's not the village. It falls on you guys. It depends on the it is. It's fall. It is, yeah. And, and we're intertwined. You live in the village. I live in the village. You know it, it, the separation in the frustration. Oh. You're right. I'm not a taxpayer. Yeah, you shouldn't have to go. So there, there was one other thing that did come up, which was around that actually I brought up, which is around farmland. It's the thing that I've been thinking about before going to the meeting. Is that we have a lot of farm farmland between villages, and it doesn't matter which town you pick, which town to town location you pick. There's farmland in between, and should there be something around lowering farmland to help mitigate, whether it be somebody owns the farmland other than the property owner, and the property owner can lease it back as our, for agricultural use, but allowing to lower it so that it is a floodplain. And making sure that they have, you know, the right insurance for crop coverage and that kind of thing, so that they can recoup anything lost. Um, but I think that we have a lot of land that is agricultural use along our rivers, and we should really be thinking, like at the state, we should be thinking about what that means. Um, the U.S. government for decades provided incentives to farmers to drain their land. <laughs> Still alive. Yeah. Um, speaking of draining land, the other thing that came up was, which I thought was a really great point too, is having thick, if you think about the roads we travel that have thick 
healthy forest lands and really nice trees along riverbanks, not single rows of trees, multiple like thick beds of trees along those rivers. They don't have the erosion problems. It traps debris. It cleans things out. Um, so another thing was, in addition to talking about the agricultural land, is about the forest land along river along river sides. <clears throat> Yeah, it's only recently that the state has even talked about the idea of not being able to plant right up next to the edge of the river. But now they really can plant because they got to have a 50 foot buffer along the river. I'm pro Japanese now. <laughs> <laughs> and there was some discussion. No, uh, you should just walk out. <laughs> but I, well, I, you know, is there anything else specific that we should know about? Well, the deadline of a few right. items. Right. The it's deadline and the property you now have at River Road e, uh, West. Uh, what was with it? Holmes Mill. Um, there was some allusion uh, separate related to that. And there may be some to this category funding to help get that. You know, the party of flood mitigation. And then that's good to know. Because Doug was in here talking about Holmes Meadow and yeah. really empowered them to think about so recreation. Sounds like some of the funding could help move that a little quicker. Yeah, I mean, we, we just talked quite a bit about the possibility of having a wastewater treatment facility move up closer to the road and is that again to me that's that's totally a village thing we shouldn't be and we shouldn't be involved in those just talking out loud operations or discussion well, well to the extent that it would be sit we would be sitting in the plant right here I mean, it's kind of well, I'm, I'm talking about applying for mitigation money to deal with right and it should be yeah. Out there. yeah lowering that you know I, I don't know if this was ever discussed, but of course, there was a, a river corridor that went around the other side of the wastewater treatment plant years and years ago. The, the riverbed still exists. Yeah, I mean, right out back yeah. here where we fill it in. Yeah. Every yeah. Yeah. You go right around, you follow that right around, it goes right around the other side of the wastewater treatment plant, all the way to the river. The river, the Guyon, followed a different path. Yeah, well, we do appreciate you guys giving us some stuff. Thanks for going to that. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah, so I, I hope you mentioned that we, you know, the select board, I'm glad you guys were there. Um, but we definitely would like to have been at that. Meeting. Yeah, we made that point yeah, a couple times. That all the care. stakeholders aren't here. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> the flaggers. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. thank you very much. That's very cool. All right. Uh, where are we on our agenda? How do you blast the uh, 14, right? Uh, did we do a conversation committee? Um, we did that. That's yeah. 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 a mass approval. Yeah, love that. Okay. That's been done. Uh, we, we, we approved the land. Uh, I think it's called the. What did you. Mowing did you come mowing. to any conclusions on mowing bits? Or? Yes. I got three bids. Um, Balding property management for 18000 oh uh, They do Hyde Park, Morrisville, one other municipality. Um, they were also offered a three year contract year one, 18000 year two, 19000 year three, 19500 um, Ridgeway property maintenance. Came in at 21,905. That's um, Boudreaux, uh, Palmer Boudreaux. And Robertson Son came in at 18,000. So we basically have two at 18,000. Two at 18, one with a three year contract, uh, one with a previous, Robertson Son with a previous vendor, um, and then a, a third slide there. And those all include. The sectors, can you give us a rundown of the properties? So yeah, let me pull up actually. It's at, it, all I need to know is examples that was that they're all bidding at the same thing. 
That's right. And I, I actually called uh, called them all and talked to them. But one of them, I gave a drive through the whole town so that everyone knew exactly what was being done and what's expected of the town. Roberts has been doing it, right? Yeah. Yes. And how much was their contract for this last year? Of course, the cemetery mowing and the regular mowing broken in is, is two separate pay items, right? Mm -hmm. In the budget. So you'd have to take the cemetery mowing and pay nine thousand. You favor one over the other everything? One over the other. Building the cemeteries? What do we do? Wow, adding on to this, that's doubling the... Well, I, so the sites are municipal offices, um, the Johnson Public Works Facility, which is not part of the bid, but um, I wanted them to give us a one time. Jason and, and the guys take care of it now, but um, not including in their price. I wanted them to know about it, so that way if I called them, we could have a per as needed invoice. Um, and I wanted that price just at the same time, because they were driving up okay. Um, the Mill House, Old Mill Park, Johnson Public Library, Legion Field, the Arboretum, the Skate Park, Evergreen Ledge, Whiting Hill, and Plot Cemetery. Um, Beard Park, I wanted them to look at, so that way, same. They had a phone, they got a phone call, they gave they, I would have a price to know, and then Grow Cemetery, the same. I was being taken care of, but I wanted them to give me for as needed price just so there's no concern or anything. So, so the we were paying a total of nine thousand bucks for everything last year. It's gone up to eighteen. Is there some like the things not get done? I mean, these are all the town properties, right? Roberts has been doing it for Robert and Sons was doing it while I was still there. And they know what they got in years ago. Right. But they, for year after year after year, they said, we'll do it the same we did it last year. I called and them. And I, I kept scratching my head and said, how the heck can I keep doing that? I mean, I called them and they said, hey, can you put a number in? And they got back to me in half an hour with the, the estimate. So they knew they knew what they were doing. So we basically have two at the same price. Right. If you're looking at the only advantage of going with, what you say, what is it? Uh, Spalding, Isaac Spalding is his name. Is he gives us a three, three year, year guarantee? Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it goes up a total of what, $1,500 over three years? Three there years. is a value to that, but I think it's, you know, if you guys are, I, I don't have an opinion. I wasn't here last year. I don't know what one vendor did or the other, but I'm sure Robert's and son. Considered to be considered for a three year contract. Yeah, that's pretty common for municipal school facilities. Uh, okay, in their past practices, <laughs> they would say we'll do it for the same we did it last year. But, or maybe they'll come back next year and ask for a 36 grade. Oh, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do we have to pick, a, pick one of these tonight? Because two things the grass is getting all. Yeah, you know, when I walked in tonight, it's game time. Yeah. I have a question. Was, was the whole house on that list? Was it? I did not see it. Yeah, sure. Because that needs yeah. to be done regularly. Ah. Is it part of the uh, Cold Spring? No. Cold Spring is village. village yeah. That was, uh, when I put together the list, I missed it. But I'll, um, all dudes I had broken out in the spreadsheet with them and I talked to them on the phone. And so what I'll do is I'll just get a you would make the motion to whoever you're gonna go with, I'll just have them put a price on that and add it to it's 15 mowing. I would ask them to do it for the same price. Yeah. All right. Yeah, our, who says just okay. add it? Oh, just we add it. We just missed a couple properties. <laughs> Handful of acres. Yeah. It is right. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah. Right? right across from Whiting Hill, which is nice. You know, they're parking yeah. on. I mean, they're right there already. They yeah. might even park there to do Whiting. And, yeah. and Malcolm House is a, yeah, that's a 10 minute mowing job. Yeah. 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 It's got a, it's got a flower garden. Dave Beard, the woods. Has, well, yeah, what, what well, did you have to find around Beard? Because... Uh, I just wanted them to look at it. So that way, if say say your volunteer says, you know, Tom, it's too much. 
I didn't want to be stuck on the hook for like trying to sort it out. So I just said, hey, would you just, this is a town property, know about it. And they all came back, it was $30 a time to run through the turners and cut the grass. Um, so it's just the way on the path. Yep. And I and I said, look, this is only going to be once or twice a year. It's not <laughs> That's it. But he's already volunteered to run this. Yeah. You got it. So there was just so like, we can take beards off and add both of us. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> so, well, beards is an actual. Well, did you have a <laughs> comment? Yeah, I did have a comment. Just with the arboretum, I'll just speak to the tree. Um, you were asking about people weren't here previous year, what kind of job they did. You know, we're consistently making it harder. It seems like to mow because we keep planting trees. Right. Uh, yeah. We had issues last year with um, running over trees. Uh, Sue tried to get uh, payment made for a few uh, hydrangeas. Ah, they got run over, which never happened. I don't believe we replaced in kind with our own money. Uh, that said, we are actively expanding the mulch rings around all the weird shapes to try and maximize the ability for them to just mulch normally and not have to build corners and things. Uh, but just keep that in mind when you're making a decision that Roberts and Sons, they do a fast job. Do a fast job. Do they do a really decent job except for mowing over the plants? We had a couple times where it wasn't real consistent. It, it would miss, it seemed like a week we'd have dandelions like this sticking up. Yeah. You know. And I know they had issues with firing and being able to fire yeah. the hell. Yeah. And I don't I don't know that we would have the same. We said this guy's a one person operation. That was the uh, um Palmer Boudreaux. As he's one guy and he just he does the model school districts uh, for the model north. And so he he's trying to now expand. He just bought a second mower and was thinking about trying to hire a second guy. You're gonna have to hire somebody because just 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 old mill park is that's a two mower big job. Yeah, shoot. Did Dean ask for a mower? <laughs> What's that? So didn't Dean ask for a mower? Yeah, yeah one of those road did. striping too. Well, <laughs> what? Well, you know, when I was down in um, Cape last year, I went into the Village Green in a robotic mower. Busy mower. It was mowing the whole green. And mower. I sat there and I watched it pull over to a docking station and call it a day. <laughs> it was. It mowed the whole green and it was a huge, you know, it was. Acre. Can you program in what a hydrangea looks like? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you can. You can see it in Google Earth because we planted them in the shape of a smiley face. So, but but the side but what? All right, we need to make a decision here. Um, what do we want to do? I would I would throw out there the idea that. Since there's a little bit of question mark around the pricing, mm -hmm. should we authorize Tom and one select board member member to approve the contract and and sign and cut a deal? Or is he, um, we need I mean we're in Mauritius. We right. need right. are, are, are we going are we gonna say Robert was calling tonight? I would say it would come down to a choice between those two to I think adding Holcomb House and then asking Robert and Sonny to commit to a three year contract is probably the factors to consider. You know, I'm absolutely serious about asking them to, especially Robert and Sonny, if they bump theirs from 9,000 to 18,000 this year, they weren't seeing the gas back. Seems like they could go uh, ahead. Again, Holcomb House, it's, it's a 10 minute, I mean, yeah, 10 minute going to not at the most. I don't, I don't have. A dog in this fight, I don't care. All in your face. Who takes care of the stuff in between tree board, tree activities, and the mowing? Like all the other plantings in town and or weeding or anything else involved in landscaping. The beautification committee does a bunch of tasks. And the tree board. And the tree board. So, you know, around the. Well, but anyway. Not pertinent to this discussion. Do you care? Do you, do you have a. I I don't really. Um, you know, I I in the past there have been concerns about the quality that Robert and Sons has done, but they've always been really cheap. They've been really inexpensive. 
you know. I really don't care. Does Does anybody like uh, do we need to wait until we get like an offer from them on a three year contract? We need to know. Well, that's yeah. kind of why I'm suggesting that we have Tom and one select board member make them just make, a, make the decision. Like we remember yeah. what they say, and then select board member tell them to do it. So it's like a plan. Yeah. Make a motion. Yep. That um, I come in time. Yeah, thanks a lot. And <laughs> I will not be in town. So, or with an in cell reception. We can vote no on this. We can update it. Yeah, you can. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. That's true. Actually, we can outvote it because we, you know, we wouldn't have it for them. <laughs> Just a little bit of a while ago. No second hand motion. Sorry. All right, we have a motion to authorize Tom and myself to pull the plug and select a contractor. We're getting away from water stuff. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. Yeah. Get the gas. Get the gas. Don't do that either. Yeah. All right. Okay. Second. Whatever. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Nice have it. Uh, just thanks a lot, I guess. It should be just for how long. It should be. Yeah. Okay. I think that brings us to the draft. Do you want to tee that up, Tom? No, so this came back from our attorney. Um, I sent this off to the Lamoille Modified Union, Unified Union School District. Um, for them to review at their next school board meeting. And so this is uh, for the left side of, I believe it's called Sterling Drive or Swift Road. Mm -hmm. um, just where the alumni building was, um, about 0.66 acres. There's no title search has been done on this yet. Um, and so it's just the approved conceptually and then Pending the title search, um, I asked the school board if they could um, approve it based on the title search, delegate signature authority from the school board. Did they need a title search? I guess we could make it a quick claim. I mean, that would be the only difference is the attorney would be able to ensure that that's the only difference in quarantine and quit. Who may, you know. I'd be happy with the quick claim deed. And no, I mean, to me, the idea of doing a title search on that is. And as messy as it we found to do the preliminary, it's probably gonna be expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll shoot that off to say hey, can you make a quick claim and just describe it. What do you what do you guys think about that? Is having a quick claim versus the warrant you need? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know the difference. Could you explain it? A warranty deed means that the seller warrants and defends the the title to the property. Right. Um, whereas a quick claim deed. You get what you get. They're saying we're going to deed you uh, 0.66 papers. Um, take it as it is. I mean, I would hope that this is a trustworthy entity we're doing business with here. So. And we're not borrowing money. I mean, right. if, if we were borrowing money, the, the guarantor would require, just right. put, you know, a title search. And that's not the case that we're getting it. Yes. My only, my only concern, I, I like to put a plain idea, um, is, is this a clean title? Are there other encumbrances possibly on this property? Well, we can certainly determine that by finding a copy of the original deed. And if there are any covenants or yeah. stipulations or... That, then I, I think that might just be a good thing to do. Here we have. Here we are. There's covenants on this building. Right. Um, and the seniors knew that, but absolutely. some of us didn't necessarily know that. Two points that should be noted: one is that the town is going to maintain, repair, and provide eight parking spaces for the school, their staff, and their visitors during school hours only. So that way, say there's no library in there. Now it's going to plow that dirt lot to maintain that. That's that's like something that's on the hook for everything. 
And then the other thing is you can sell it back with one dollar. So the right of first refusal to a dollar just back to the school. So, so if we don't own it, gonna go back. Well, they'll have an opportunity to buy a bat in a dollar. <laughs> if they if they turn that field down and we can sell. That's right. right? Yeah. <laughs> I think we should uh, get this property purchased for a dollar while while we can. I, I agree. Before they raise the price. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So uh, I think they already raised the price. $10. It's ten dollars. Ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, and other valuable <laughs> considerations. Yeah. No, well, that's you know that's inflation. Nice. You know, the old days used to say a dollar. Yeah. I just haven't caught up with inflation yet. That's like ninety one hundred. Okay, so do do we have these partners? Are we are we conceptually in agreement that we could turn this into a quick thing? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It requires us to find a deed and the book and page, and we can rely on them to report to us if there are any weird things in those rosemary deed stipulations. Rosemary, rosemary, rosemary. Yeah. Yeah. So are we good? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So the deed is, is Rosemary. Is your thought the deed is more than forty years old? Or? Well, probably. Well, I'm sure it is because I took a quick look for it and I couldn't find it. That's always that's typically what attorneys to go back for me here. Yeah. So probably two hundred and something. Yeah. Sounds like plan. Come on. All right. Are we ready to adjourn? Well, uh, we have a. Executive session item. Uh, um, do you have the language? In the, oh, it's right there. Um, so items 15 and 16. Uh, are we good? Do we need to do anything on, on 15? I don't think that's did it in public. We decided to do it in public instead. Okay. So the executive session we would be talking about then would be item number 16. Which would be for an employment evaluation under one BSA 313 B3. We have a motion that you did. Yeah. I, I know that. One BSA 313 A3. Yeah. I second it. Second. And can we invite Tom initially into that conversation? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Yes. yeah. That'll be acceptable. Yeah. Yes. Is there a perspective? Was it in the packet, the lamp? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, good one. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. That was your letter, too. Any discussion? Yes. Motion passes. We are going to do an executive session. session.